This week on Boots and Backstraps, we've got Lady Jo from the Farmer's Daughters in studio. She talks all things from her humble beginnings to the powerful women of country music. Listen to her tell stories of how women are taken over. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Boots and Backstraps podcast. Come on now. Honey's on, looking for back straps, way deep in the woods, tracking in a swamp to a hay field under the harvest moon. When the tags are filled, it's time to switch up our boots. Head down to the honky tonk, get us a swing dance or two. We're talking about boots and back straps. Hey everybody, this is a show where we talk all things hunting and country music. From the classics through today. From big bucks to bull elk. We've got it all. I'm joined as always by my wonderful co-host and country music legend, Tom Katz. Come on now, how you doing Shane? I'm doing great, how are you sir? I'm great man. I can't believe the great weather we've had, I mean all through August, I'm not August. Uh, March? January, February, March, (laughs) yes. (laughs) <laughs> you haven't had any whiskey yet. Don't worry. No, it's not. Well, not that you know of. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> the breakfast beer while you're taking your shower this morning? Yeah. You know, this is going to be a fun episode. Uh, this is a great topic that we're going to touch on today, and we have a wonderful guest with us today. And um, as I keep saying throughout all of our podcasts, we have a tremendous amount of colorful guests coming uh, onto our show. We do. And we have a colorful guest today, so... I'm pretty excited, and I'm glad to be here, and uh, we're going to have fun for the next hour and a half. You know, it's interesting to me, TK, that we, if we look over the span of our guests, you got the sort of like, we're slumming, where we get a bunch of dudes in here, and then we bring these beautiful women, and they class the joint up <laughs> a little bit. And you know? funny how our viewership goes up, too. Right. I mean, we were slumming when we had uh, Kid George on, <laughs> <laughs> Dave Miller. He's a, he's a handsome fellow. <laughs> uh, I think all of our guests have been fabulous. Uh, from from start, uh, what was his name? The, Ryan Pilgrim. Ryan Pilgrim, and then yeah. we had Heidi Owens from Hitchville. And Mitch Gordon. Mitch Gordon. What's run, who else did we have? Let's run through them all. Yeah, it was uh, Mitch, and then Dave, and of course we did have KG in. So yeah, yeah, we had uh, Matt Mattoon from Matt WeFest, Mattoon, the new owner of the WeFest. Yeah, yeah, and the, and the list that we have coming on is just amazing. A lot of well, we're going to have. Uh, the creator of Scent Shield. If you're a hunter, you know what that is. Uh, it's the product that us hunters spray on ourselves. It's like the cloak of invisibility for hunters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It kills uh, odors, and uh, odors are gases. For those of you that don't know that, the odors that come off of our body or anywhere. Or out of our body. Or out of our body is a gas. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Bill Robinson uh, created a product that kills gas. Yeah. Surprised you didn't get that in uh, liquid form to uh, ingest. I don't think that that's probably FDA approved. Nah. I mean, I'm just going on a limb there. <laughs> uh, you know so, what we do need, though, is we need a little uh, whiskey. Well. Because I can't get into A mode without my whiskey. Without our soon to be sponsor, uh, yeah, hopefully. Jacques Daniel. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, ma'am. Mm-hmm. All right, how about a toast? To a, uh, another good episode. Yeah. And you, ma'am? She's off camera, but she's going to get a clink in here anyway. Cheers. Hmm. Beautiful. So, Beautiful way to start the morning at 6 o'clock. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. It's not 6 o'clock we're, in the morning. We're not filming at 6 a.m. <laughs> Pretty tough to get guests in at 6 a.m. Pretty tough to get me out of bed. Well, speaking of guests, I am uh, super yeah. pumped, and I know you're excited to have our guest this week on. She is the proprietor, owner, and uh, lead singer for The Farmer's Daughters, also known as TFD here in the local market. Yep. We've known each other a long time, and she's a very successful local country singer, local country superstar, and it's about time we get some more, like I said, class in the joint. So help us welcome <laughs> to Boots and Backstraps, Lady Jo. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited to have you. Awesome. Um, yeah, this is exciting. I'm kind of nervous all of a sudden. As soon as the introduction came, I'm like, I'm fine, drinking wine. And now my heart's like pumping as soon as the cameras go. <laughs> You're good. Don't worry. I know. Nothing okay. to be nervous okay. around here. 
We're well, we, just sitting around BSing. We are. And we know you've uh, you know you got a pretty busy schedule, so it's cool that you're able to carve out a little time to come eat with us. So Yeah, for sure. I'm wearing a few hats these days, but yeah. um, this is always this is my joy to do stuff right. like this. So right. anytime. Have me anytime. Yeah, and we will. You know, we have talked to so many great people and, and you're you included that we'll get kind of a rotation going. We'll have you back and say, oh, what's been happening in the last year or whatever? Let's get back to it, you know. Right. So you we want to cover I, go you ahead. Know what I'm excited about is all three of us are wearing Western boots today. Oh, is that a first? A Hence, first episode? I think it is. All three of us wearing boots? Wait, do you, you see my been... back strap? Ah! <laughs> I don't Ooh. even know what that is. Really? <laughs> now that you know what back straps are. <laughs> For those of you that are listening or watching, yeah, back we, straps, Have we gone over that yet? No, we haven't. Back straps <laughs> yeah. Here are we go. the hunter's slang for prime rib, ribeye. Oh. Uh, which comes off of any animal. I, if you were to go to a steakhouse and order prime rib or a restaurant and order prime rib or ribeye, uh, that's what you'll be eating is back straps. Oh, I'm so hungry So back now. strap is that muscle that runs along the spine of the animal on, on either side. Sides, yeah. Sure. I'm missing so, that. It's different than the tenderloin. People mix, mix yep. that up with the People tenderloin. People do confuse that. Because the tenderloin is actually under the spine near the hips. Yep. Yep. Which, which technically is the tenderest meat on the animal. Absolutely. But the uh, one that you mentioned, the uh, back strap specifically because of the a little bit more fat content. Okay. A tenderloin is very lean. So when you get like a filet mignon, that's tenderloin. Okay. When you get a ribeye, that's back strap. So you can just go and order a back strap. You at, could, I don't at know. A steak restaurant? Well, you would think if they're a, <laughs> if they're a steak restaurant worth their salt. At my restaurant, uh, you would be able to order back straps, and they would have known what you were talking about because okay. we featured a different wild game every week. So, yeah, they would have known what a back strap was. The, do you know the difference between a prime rib and a ribeye? I don't. The prime rib, when you cut out a back strap out of an animal, it has a what they call a ribbon. It's a ribbon of kind of fatty meat and a kind of kind of makes a question mark actually i have lots of ribbons <laughs> <laughs> at least two of a sister After and then the inside of that prime rib is that center cut is the ribeye but a prime rib is with all of it the ribbon and the center cut so I'll a little meat education today yeah thank you a little steak education i thought i was all educated on meat and for those of you that might be, <laughs> what did she say? I missed it. So she thought she was fully educated on meat. Zing. <laughs> I'm used to having a drummer like behind me. Right. We, we do need a rim shot. Get a soundboard going in there. Producer Danny will have to add that to the list. <laughs> One rim shot for Shane. <laughs> no. You, I thought this was PG. <laughs> PG 13. 13. Oh, yeah, we're, we're good. good. Then. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you know Danny and I both well enough to know she's never going to give me a rim shot, no matter how funny the joke <laughs> is. I'll look over there at the, the control room and she'll just go, That's nope. not funny. Yeah. No. <laughs> and for those of you that are listening and uh, watching, boots and back straps, you know, it's kind of interesting that we never explained our name. Boots are not hunting boots in our situation. Right, for this show. Cowboy boots, cowboy boots and back straps. So we got cowboy boots and prime rib. Do you see these boots over here? Are those Very not the cool. sexiest thing ever? And she's got the Minnesota Viking she's got colors the purple on. Purple inlay, yeah. Yep. Fantastic. I know. I know what I'm doing. You do. <laughs> not messing around. Cowgirls are a wonderful part of our country tradition. We're going to be talking about that today. We are. So we've got a lot of stuff that we want to cover yeah. with you, Joe. Um, oh wow. <laughs> you know, kind of going all the way back and maybe starting with your roots and how you got interested in singing and what drew you to country specifically, who some of your influences were. So why don't we start with that? Because I want to kind of work my way through the Lady Joe timeline into what TFD is doing now and kind of what you have planned for the future. But sure. let's start with the Lady Joe, the early years. Oh, the early years. Okay, so I grew up uh, living with my grandma um, on and off with my parents, grandma, aunt, uncle. So um, I was introduced to a lot of music genres. So everyone I lived with had their own. My mom was into, you know, uh, Whitney Houston and like the Motown kind of stuff. Okay. My grandma was always country. So just always. So that was like my main, you know, just backbone. Joe, where was your grandmother from? Um, she was born and raised here. Um, but her parents were from other places. I think it was, um, Texas and or California or something. So sure, okay. I guess I don't know. I didn't ask her a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah. was just the awesome lady I got to visit, you know. 
Yeah. Um, so I would say country music was, I was listening to Reba and Tanya Tucker and Dolly Parton, like, all day long. And, um, yeah, Ronna Reeves as time went on and Shania Twain. And then I wasn't really, like, the biggest Martina fan, which Lindsay will probably be like, what? How are you not? But um, I kind of stuck to the vocalists that I could emulate, you know, and Martina was not in my vocal range. <laughs> she's not many people's vocal range. Right. right? She's amazing. She is. Oh, that teeny, teeny little body and that huge, huge voice. voice. Like Faith. Yeah. Yes. Faith, just a monster voice for tiny little body. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so country was my thing when I started singing live. I actually did a variety show with um, Matt Neef, Tara Bixby, a couple known names around here <laughs> yeah right um so i started doing that and i did that for 11 Matt's years get, he's getting credit on like multiple shows here i know is that weird <laughs> um he actually was one of the guys that uh taught me how to harmonize because when i came in i was obviously a lead singer right and um so he showed me how to work with people and a few musicians got pretty frustrated with me because <laughs> i didn't know um so he was very graceful and he helped me a lot so that's amazing I, because that. pretty much anyone in the business now in this market knows you you've got some of the best harmonies around Aww. so it's amazing to, to hear you say oh i sucked at harmony at one point i'm like what <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me because they're so good now yeah so i do have a lot of people that will say the same thing or every time i work with someone new a new vocalist um like Lindsay, she you know would say i didn't know how to harmonize and now it's her favorite thing to do so she's always like can you do lead so i can harmonize i'm like no you have the Martina voice. <laughs> yeah. Well, so give you Lindsay do. a little, you know, yeah. plug here because, you know, we're going to mention her, obviously. Sure. She's Lin- an important part yeah. of you. This is Lindsay Liu um, that you're seeing right here. Um, it's actually Lindsay Larson, grown up here in uh, North Branch, and she married Chad Olson. So she's now Lindsay Olson. And, and they're uh, about to have another baby, right? Yes. Her third baby. Pretty it's exciting. a boy. That's what I was hoping for because I loved raising my boys. So I was really excited when she found out she's going to have a baby boy. So, yeah. yes, she's my co-singer, my partner. Yeah, she's fantastic. And you guys sound great together. Thank you. Yeah. We work hard on that. <laughs> a lot of alcohol. No, I'm just kidding. So people, <laughs> you don't have to be kidding. Back in the day. <laughs> right, right. So people actually compare your voice to, uh, well, not Barbara Mantrell, who were we just talking about? Uh, the power of voice, the Martina McBride voice. Voice. Yeah, that's amazing. I can't wait to hear you. I sing. mean, not me, but Lindsay. Lindsay has Lindsay's my powerhouse. Oh, so I would like her to stay lead all the time, but I got to give her a break here and there. Sure, <laughs> it is a tag team. You know, you got to for sure give your voice a rest a little bit. And yes, we were talking about that I think last week with uh, about Montgomery Gentry. How yeah. Eddie is carrying the whole show, and I saw a show where he was singing both him and. T. Roy's songs, and I'm like, man, that's a lot to do. Yeah, I mean, sing all those songs and not get a break in there. Mm-hmm. Like Mick Jagger, he doesn't really take a, much of a break unless uh, his bar, his partner there is uh, Rich uh, Keith Richards. Keith, Keith Richards. Richards. I was going to say Richard Keith, the guy that looks like he's like not alive. Keith, you know, <laughs> unless he's doing <laughs> yeah. a guitar solo. <laughs> right. Oh man, what a story that is. But anyway, he sings the whole show, and oh my gosh, he doesn't get a break. Yeah, that would be hard. I don't know how he does it. So you're in this variety show, and you meet Matt and Tara. Yeah. And- so I'm in the variety show. Um, Tara comes in when I'm there. Um, I went through a lot of musicians, but we did disco. We did uh, Motown. We did uh, 50s. And wow. So we sang everything. So every song that I hear on the radio now, I'm like, I sang that. I sang that. I sang that. And it's kind of fun and flashbacks. Yeah. But um, everyone kind of broke off. Um 2013 and they decided that they wanted a band behind them because we did a track show so we had all the harmonies and this kind of stuff behind us but we went out and we entertained so we learned to work a crowd get on the tables talk to people and be really engaged with our audience so yeah. i took that and i said okay well i'm gonna put this into my band we're gonna have dance moves we're gonna you know we're just gonna change the show so uh, we split off he went and did hitchville And then um, I started singing with Tara in a Northern Charm. And then we just kind of split off from there. And then that's when the Farmer's Daughters came about. So when the Farmer's Daughters, in their first iteration, which is when I met Joe, there was three of you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the third was because um, shortly after I started, I got pregnant. 
Oh, okay. And so we trained Sheila in to take my spot. Okay. So we wanted her to be like hands on in the show so she could really take over and the show could flourish while I was gone. Yeah. Um, but she quit. <laughs> she ended up quitting the week that I went into labor. So I had to continue playing the entire time. That's and I did. I had a baby and I went right back to the stage. Wow. <laughs> how, how many children is that uh, at that point? <laughs> uh, she's my four, or he was my third. Wow. Yeah. I'm not going to be a smart aleck, but you're, uh, you were educated early. Yes, I was. She grew up on the streets of North Minneapolis. Yeah. I grew up right in the middle of Minneapolis, so I understand uh, how that education. Which is a tough gig when you're a Polak. <laughs> we're both Polaks. <laughs> I was waiting for the Mexican jokes to come out. <laughs> ah. <laughs> we were talking about that last week. We'll get to that after the break. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes, yeah, so North Minneapolis. Uh, uh Ended up pregnant 14. My parents moved us up here, and then that's when, like, I was seriously afraid when, <laughs> I'll never forget when they moved us up here. Have you guys ever been to Sunrise? Oh, yeah. And seen that little schoolhouse, the white house? Yeah, absolutely. She drove by, and she goes, this is your school, and I didn't see the school that they built behind it. Uh-huh. And I seriously started crying, thinking I was going to have to wear a dress and a bonnet, and we're back at the little house in the prairie you carry days. a little chalkboard. <laughs> yeah, and I'm used to wearing body dresses and heels to school, Yeah, you know? And yeah. It was different, definitely. People wore pajamas to school that, here. That main building in Sunrise, uh, the big block building, looks. Like, I think it originally was a bank. Uh, oh. dear friend of mine owns that, and they had a little... Uh, pub there nice and uh she uh in the last few years stopped serving alcohol though out of there little cafe okay cool place if you ever been down into sunrise isn't not much it's not really a town it's a building and a school <laughs> and it's right on the sunrise river that flows from martin lake all the way into the st croix river right beautiful i actually you actually sent me a listing that's right off of the sunrise river that i <laughs> It's the most beautiful log home you've ever seen, and it said, coming soon, Yeah, which means it's not even going to make it to market. <laughs> right. A lot of stuff is selling quick now. Somebody would buy that right up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, if it was a different scenario, if we weren't doing the pie, I would jump on that. I would have jumped on that one in a heartbeat. It's shocking to me, not to like shift gears, because this episode's all yeah. about you, Joe, but some of the houses that I'm walking through right now Mm -hmm. and within 24 hours, there are multiple offers. And I'm like in a normal market, this one will be on the market for a month. Right. Wow. Because they're just, they're they're, not even, well, there's no inventory. So even ones that need a lot of work or, you know, what you might call disrepair is kind of the most PC way of saying it. Sure. And they're just sitting on a stack offers in the first day or two. Yeah. We're up in the North branch area and Shane sends me listings from probably Forest Lake all the way up past Rush City. He changes well, his criteria like every other day. I know. You know, I got to say it when <laughs> it I can think about it. Otherwise, I'll it's forget like, about it. Well, I want to get one with the land and a house. Well, well, no, time. no, I, I want to get land only and then build a house. And I'm just like, <laughs> I want to be on in western Wisconsin. No, no, I want to be on this side of the river. I'm like, okay. <laughs> True. Yeah. I won't deny it. He's got his heart set on this parcel that's over in the St. Croix Valley. Uh, yeah, in the right Taylor's on Falls uh, area. Uh, north of just north of uh taylor's falls but but the owner is uh very firm on price he's been sitting on this <laughs> property for over a year expensive and just won't oh negotiate. he's been sitting on that property for more than two or three years he just won't he won't negotiate i've talked to the guy a few times real nice guy old farmer guy but he knows what he's got he's got this property that's worth a fortune but up to the st croix river it's beautiful yeah it's yeah. like a little Yellowstone. Anyway, the housing market He sheds market a tear every time we talk about it. Does he? <laughs> yeah, His that's want true. list is like my rider. Would you rider. please send him a link to this podcast? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Brown M&M's only, right, Joe? Yes. <laughs> Shane, would you please send him a link to the podcast so he knows that we were talking about him and his property? Yeah, Dave. Maybe his he'll name have is a Dave. little sympathy for me. His name is David. <laughs> Maybe not. Sorry, Super Joe. nice guy. Yeah, well, surprise, nice I'm relieving you of your podcast duties. I'm taking over today, so go get your house. It's your last day. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, you two are long, long-time friends, and I'm quite sure you could uh, speak for an hour or two together, but I want to sit here and listen anyway. Oh. <laughs> I'll, have some, I'll have something to interject every once in a while. We'll give him a hug at the break. Yes, we'll okay. A, I need a hug, too, so yeah, let's yeah. do that. Well, we will do that. Lynn and I were at a restaurant in uh, Lionel, uh, not Lionel, in uh, Lindstrom, uh, Sasago, actually, last night. And the waitress came out. Is there anything else I can do for you? I said, I'm going to need a hug and a kiss before I leave. 
And she looked at me and she kind of gave me the snake eye. She said, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old cowboy Pat line. I love that she was nice and strong with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you women these days. So how do you yeah, go from, you. you know, you you're, have a passion for singing, clearly. You love country music. You, you're getting to kind of dip your toe in all these different genres as you build your chops. Mm-hmm. How do you go from that where you're just enjoying the stage to... I want to deal with all the headache of being a band leader slash band owner. How do you get to that? I think it was just 11 years of watching it done and being like, I could do that better. I could do that better. Or now I know how that works. Yeah. Um, So that's actually why Lindsay and I only have our picture. (laughs) Um, Everyone's like, why don't we, I want to see your band. Why don't you have a picture of the band? And I'm like, cause the band members leave. They change. They they change all the time. So I know that this is the product and we're going to be the people that are always here. So um, and it was a big thing for me to put Sheila on there, but I've really thought she was going to be the face of TFT for a while. Um, I really planned on taking time off, but that didn't happen. So, um, just living and learning, experiencing 11 years of watching somebody else do it and then taking it over. And it is a headache. It's a lot of work. And I only get, I look forward to the weekends and performing and hitting the stage because that is my reward. Yeah. You, you bet. Know? And sometimes I don't get paid because I'll waive my pay so everybody else gets a nice chunk. You have and, done that for me. Yeah. And it's just, I don't care. Like, I really love what I'm doing yeah. and I just want to do it. So she, when we booked these guys for Jack Friday, she said that to me on the phone. She goes, I just need to make sure that my crew gets paid. Yep. Just make it's sure that the band gets paid. Yeah. So what an awesome, and it was yeah. obviously, obviously very generous of them. <laughs> To you come know, play the show for us, but then for her to make it work financially. I've heard that, that story so, so many times. our headliner times. that year gouged us, mm-hmm. so we, we won't name any names. <laughs> yeah, that's, and you know, people ask me about the various country musicians that we've had at the WeFest and what their personalities are like, and I'll say one thing for sure. 99% of them are the, most, are the kindest, yeah. most generous people because they've all grown up that way. Mm-hmm. They've all gone through the thing that you're going through. And all of them have donated their time. I know Shane and I know myself emceeing and hosting uh, pro- uh, non-profit. Benefits and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hundreds. Yeah. Well, it's no. just the way it is, you know. And if you don't do that, well, what goes around comes around, you know. And Yeah. It's God just, gave it, us a talent. And we need to make sure we share it. Yeah. And it's so, it's so gratifying, you know, helping someone else out, some organization, some club, you know, so good for you. You get it. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that too. I don't think, I think people it comes gr- back. I was just going to say, I don't think people grasp the grind of what it is to manage a band, to have to fill dates, to book clubs, to negotiate contracts, to deal with promoters and club owners and managers and band members and all their own individual challenges in life. We'll say, yeah, you know, the drama of, of being a band leader or even the small time switches you settle on a time and then all of a sudden they're advertising a different time. And then you're like, Oh, and everyone's, well, what time are we supposed to be there? Yeah. And it's like last minute stuff. It's like, Ugh. yeah. Without even going into having to replace positions because you do, <laughs> exactly. yeah. You know, people just see you on stage and they're like, Oh, these guys are great. We love them. Can't wait to see them on the next date. Well, they don't understand that between that date and the next weekend, you get 40 hours of running yeah. a business. Yep, exactly. To get to the stage. And then the stage is my reward. Just, you know, singing that first song, you know, I still get nervous every show. Cause really? yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> you don't show it. I do. I'm like usually really nervous. So I usually say a little prayer before I get on and I'm always nervous that my voice isn't going to work right. Or that I'm going to miss a big part or that something's going to go wrong with the sound because I do run the business. Yeah. So everything is my face, you know? Yes. Like if there, we were just talking about the weddings and um, anything that can go wrong with your equipment and stuff. So yeah, it should be, that's just always a big worry. So I worry about everything. <laughs> that's like the, a big reason why, you know, we don't do weddings anymore as a general rule. Right. I mean, I'll get roped in occasionally to do the MC side, but that's under the guise of, I'm not doing any equipment, you know, mm-hmm. it's going to be KG as my DJ. Like I just, I don't want to deal with any of that yeah. because stuff does go wrong. Uh, we were your always DJ so forgets scared. to change the batteries in the mic. <laughs> yes. And then you get like <laughs> major feedback or something. <laughs> oh my gosh. We we're we're always worried to do the weddings or take the wedding gigs. Like we love to do them because you know, it's, it's nice money, whatever. But 
yeah. I'm always so scared to ruin somebody's big day. You know, like I don't want. What if something goes wrong? And I don't forget know. the I'm words just, in the spotlight dance. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're just gonna play this one. Yeah. I never worried Oops. about that chain. No, about ruining their their event. I just decided I'm gonna drink as much as they do, <laughs> and they ain't gonna notice it. I'm gonna yeah. fit right in. We're all going to have fun. Most of the time, you know, when you're, I mean, at least for our, the people we know, because we're kind of part of the same circle, they're all a bunch of country bumpkins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So literally, as soon as the I do's are done, it's. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's I do clink right? drink. <laughs> yeah. Or clink like. Clink and drink. Our buddy Billy Bob and his wife Greta that did shots on the altar. Oh, oh what? No. part of their ceremony. Oh, that's mad. Shots of Jack on the altar. Was it a Catholic cold. wedding? <laughs> you? No, it was not. Because if it was a Catholic wedding, you get by with that if you have an that's Irish. That's called communion. Yeah, if you have an Irish priest. <laughs> <laughs> and then you break out the bingo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's um, funny. So uh, tell, tell us a little bit about who you're... I mean, we talked a little bit about Sheila and kind of that evolution. Mm-hmm. And then I think sort of at that same time period, you had Cindy, right? Yeah, Cindy started off with me yeah. when we first started. I did go to Lindsay before Cindy, um, and Lindsay had turned me down about 15 times. Um, she, actually, through the whole mirror image life, she's turned me down almost every year I'd call her and ask her to come sing with me because I met her up here. We would do karaoke contests together um, at the local like, bars. She's awesome. Yeah. And in, like, North, oh, in North Branch? In North Branch at JJ's, um, just oh anywhere, goodness. Stacey, anywhere. Like, Sidelines? <laughs> yeah. That's Cambridge, I actually, sorry. I never did um, sidelines, but I always saw her at JJ's for the co- for the contest there. And yeah, I'm like, I want to sing with her. Um, so she would always turn me down. And then finally, uh, she said yes, because Cindy went off and did like she really wanted to just be kind of a solo. Maybe I don't know, solo on her own kind of thing. And she did the American Idol thing. American Idol, Yeah. Yeah. So I, I called Lindsay and I was like, hey, I went through about 15 auditions Um I don't recommend going through Greg's list for vocalists. And, uh, Been there. <laughs> Position like, players are vocalists. Yeah. Like people can, um, whoa, what? No, that's not singing. So tell your mom <laughs> to stop <laughs> pacifying you. Cause, right. you Someone know, needs to your tell friends you the truth. They're not your friends. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then Lindsay, uh, her story is that she was out playing bingo with her friends, had a few drinks. I had texted her, called her don't remember and she's like yeah i'll do it you know and then the next morning she woke up she goes oh no (laughs) what did i do (laughs) and then by then um she came and did the audition and she was hired before she even walked through the door i mean come on right like audition yeah (laughs) just so you can say you did it yeah 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 that's fantastic she's just to make it fair to everyone else who auditioned yeah that makes sense yeah and it, what you said is absolutely true. It's some people just need to know. I, I was, a, before we met, I was a live vocalist with a local country act that, and we talked about this on another episode, TK, that was uh, originally called North Gone South. And then that band, after we ch- changed a bunch of members over and I left, they, Jesse um, Becker and Channing and all yeah. those guys, John Krantz, well, Channing is now his wife, but, and uh, um, all those guys, Drew, were north gone south and they changed the name right away to maiden dixie okay and so maiden dixie kind of took off from my band anyway so when i was with the band it was like i obviously have some ability with controlling a room and being entertaining like Mm -hmm. i can do that but i can't sing and so i was just (laughs) faking it for a few years basically while we were on the road and it wasn't good and i'm not ashamed to say it i'm not a good singer so it's just like do you have any video of when your original band I don't, I don't know. There might be some out there. If you, we're going to have Erica Hansen in here at some point. Sure. And Erica was our last female lead while I was still with the band. Okay. And so she, she's super, I mean, she's very gracious and she'll say, oh no, you were fine. I'm like, no, I wasn't. Or Brandon Backstrom. <laughs> Surprise, we have video. Everybody. You know, you think you're Brandon fine Backstrom. while you're singing and it all New. sounds great. And then all of a sudden you either hear it or you see it and you go, yes. oh. Yeah, my <laughs> angle or not my angle, yes. but like my contribution to the group was I have a, a extensive business background so i was the band owner manager whatever so i'm getting us lined up with all these great gigs we were climbing the ladder mm-hmm. way faster than anybody else locally yeah where we got from the 200 hundred dollar gig to the 12 and 1500 dollars gigs in a year yep. so we moved up the food chain really quickly and it was all this concept design that i put together of how the band was formed and what we were doing and yeah. picking the songs that we were playing all that stuff 
So that was really my contribution of being entertaining. I could tell jokes in between songs. I could keep the room moving. I could give the band members, like you said, advice about standing on a table or like getting out into the crowd or whatever. Mm-hmm. I always had a good feel for that, but the singing thing was like, I just was never good at it. So Do you want to hear a singing story? I was just <laughs> thinking about it. I it's do. a good one. Are you singing in it? I am. Okay. Will right. you sing I'm with the story? Can <laughs> we sing the story? I'm on a, hunt, a little hunting excursion with Troy Gentry, and we go into this tavern to have a beverage or two, and there's a guy playing a guitar on a little soapbox, and, well, he knows, he recognizes Troy. He says, do you mind joining me? And so he brought out another guitar, and so they were both sitting up there playing a bunch of great songs, and then later on in the evening, you know, he started doing some of the, uh, more adult songs that we used to do in the Rowdy Cowboy show. Oh, yeah. And he says, Tom, <laughs> You might know a few of those, Joe. He said, yeah. Tom, Tomcat, bring your stool up here. And we're going to sing. So we're singing, and, I, you know, we'd had a few Jim Beans. I'll say alcohol was involved. And I'm wailing out because I know the words to all these songs. Oh, yeah. And I'm wailing out. And my friend Eric Myers from Outdoor News is there, and he's videotaping this whole thing. So he's got camera and. Uh, He's got sound and camera, so he sends me a, a all copy the ways of this. to make it a permanent part of your life. <laughs> he sent me a copy of it, and I don't know. I suppose I sang two or three songs with T. Roy, and I was like, "Well, who's that? Who's vo- who's other voice is that?" And I'm like, "Oh, that's not good." Who- oh, <laughs> oh no! And he and, and Eric looks at me. He goes, "So that's you, you idiot!" <laughs> I said, "No way! <laughs> I'm I, I, am I that bad?" Oh, my God, it was so oh, no. humbling. And I thought, man, this is going to be great. I'm singing with Troy Gentry, and we're all drinking. We're having fun, and I know the words, so I'm not messing up. And then I heard how I was <laughs> singing. Playback. I was, like, devastated. I was like, oh, I'm horrible. <laughs> you know, the easiest way to determine you don't have chops, get in the studio and try to cut songs. Yeah, there oh, you yeah. go. We did a couple of demos, and that's where I was like, who the F is that? Yes. Well, like, there's like a wailing dog in the background. What is that? <laughs> there's <laughs> like, an art to me. studio. It's so hard. And it's more like, you know, hard on your voice too. We yeah. could go into the studio for a couple hours and leave and be like, oh, I can't talk, you yeah, know? Because you're just but over and over again. we do four hour shows, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because, well, whatever you're not hitting, it's obviously not comfortable. So then you're hitting those uncomfortable spots in your vocals. And yeah, yeah it's. It's not easy for and sure. And unless you got a million dollars, you're not getting a studio right. that's got the <laughs> auto tune. Yeah. So it's it's you. It's your yeah. voice. It's very. <laughs> um, your story about um, hearing yourself back. So when I first started out with Cindy, and it was we didn't have all the tracks and all the vocals behind us and all that kind of stuff. It was just the two of yeah. you. So it was just the two of us, and it was very. Um, humbling to hear we'd always take videos because i'd like to critique and so we take videos and then i'd listen back and i'm like oh i'm a little flat there oh my harmony didn't match there or she went up and so i'd watch all these videos back and it was very humbling to be like oh i thought it was a great show and then i get home and i'm like oh my gosh and I'm it probably so was a great show <laughs> and it probably was but we're our own worst critic yeah. you know we yeah. i mean we see and hear the things that we know expect to hear yeah but the public doesn't necessarily know because either they're not as educated as to what we do, right. or it's just you know something that they gloss over. And, but sure. we are, I mean, when we do our shows or we try to sing, <laughs> we know if we're doing it right or doing it wrong. Right. You know, the I will give you credit where credit's due, though. I mean, that's the. It's like being a professional athlete. You got to watch tape in between the games, you right, mm-hmm. to kind of see what you're doing and not doing, and. I wish way more musicians locally did that. Yeah. I made the joke when I think Heidi was here and I was talking about how it kills me now stepping off the stage and just kind of watching bands. It's like, why the hell do they ever put a mic in front of the rhythm player? They (laughs) they never sing. Like they pretend like they're going to sing, but then like twice, (laughs) twice in the show, they'll walk over for like a word and kind of do this as they're walking by. I'm like, why did the, engineer spent all that time yeah setting up your mic and sound checking you and like you made it sound like you were gonna sing and then you don't you know what i mean we've done that so many times where we'll have everyone mic'd up and then i'll be like singing and i'll be like where's my backup yeah right, right. Like, nobody oh, you know i think they just get so into what they're doing and they just forget oh i was supposed to sing right there and then sometimes they'll come up and do one word and then back off and and you're kind of like oh you missed it <laughs> It was so funny okay. to me when you, when you can see that, like with the lead player or whatever, and they'll like pretend like they're really busy, like working into a chop or something. <laughs> yeah. and it's like, 
No, you're supposed to be up there singing a little bit. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really funny. I have a topic you can relate to. Forgive me, but when you no. said it's like they're faking it, how about these DJs that you see on television and in the movies, and they're up there and they're doing this and they're doing that, and and people always ask, "What are they doing?" I said, "They're not doing anything." Yeah. I said they're faking it. They're acting like they're so busy and they're doing this and they're doing <laughs> that, and some maybe they'll be a. Uh, mixing a, a song on a, on a with an LP once in a while but really but they so much of the music now is all pre-programmed it's all cued in there and the mixes are all in there and so they're just up there doing a show Kyle what do we call that buddy matching colors matching colors <laughs> you look at some of these DJ softwares that they're using now and okay. you see a stream of the song and then you get your second song that you're going to go into and so to beat match it back in the day, you'd have your turntables and you're listening and you're lining up the second record right. to make sure the beats are good. And now they just like you get one stream running and you just line up that second stream and they're always different colors. So it's color coordinated. That's what we joke with KG. We're always like, hey, we can match colors. And That's he's awesome. like, it's harder than that. Like, you're yeah, colorblind. See, this is all yeah. lingo that happened after <laughs> I retired. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> matching colors. Yeah. I, so like when you left, it was still CDs. Yeah, and A-tracks. records. Come on, A-tracks. <laughs> I used. I I started in uh, uh, the mid seventies, uh, early seventies rather. I started life in the late seventies. Yeah, and me too. <laughs> we I used every. You know, we obviously we uh, we used forty fives. Yeah, we used uh, uh, thirty inch sing, thirty. Yeah, thirty threes LPs, thirty inch singles. I mean, we use that, but we also used cassettes we also used very rarely but once in a while we mixed in if you couldn't find a particular song we had a track capability and we used it very rarely mm-hmm. but we used then we used the cds and now lps are back in uh style and the disc jockeys really enjoy using them the disc jockeys that know what's going on but yeah yes i did <laughs> use an eight track and uh <laughs> Smokey uh, Robinson's greatest hits. <laughs> uh, Jill, right over your shoulder there, there's a whole, there's one, two, three, there's a half a dozen boxes of oh, yeah. uh, LPs and stuff that I still have. Some of them are collectors. Oh, nice. man, many of them. I'm just looking at, and I don't know why it's here, it's not intentional, but the first record in that second box over is Meet the Beatles. And it's an original, you know, in great shape LP. And I understand that's worth a lot of money. And a lot of those I are worth it. I have a uh, print. For those of you guys that are thieves, uh, Tom's yeah. address is. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, look over there. The I have <laughs> a guy that owns a, a record shop in uh, Wisconsin. I, I think he offered me just way too little money because I have hundreds of these. I have a, a stack of uh, 12-inch singles um, and from originals from Prince, Madonna, you know, Michael Jackson, I actually have a, a purple 12 inch single, a purple rain. Oh, nice. Yeah. And the LP itself is purple. That's a real collector's thing. And I probably shouldn't be telling. I better put this stuff away. Yeah. Now. Better take it somewhere else. <laughs> you but might anyway. see her out here in a ski mask in all the night. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I make noise with everything I do. So I'd be singing like the sneaky song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, after today's cast, I am taking all of my LPs, yeah. and I'm putting them in a huge vault safe that I have. Too late. I took your LPs. Yep, they're gone. <laughs> okay, so that was my little interjection to what you guys are talking about. So, yeah, I just found that buying in-ears was, like, so helpful. And then now when I watch back, I'm like, oh, I'm, that's pretty good. I'm pretty good. Well, there you go. Not to mention, so it helped. you talked about being active on stage. You like the yeah, entertaining part yes. of it. You get rid of the wedges, you got a lot more stage, right? Right. And here's you and Lindsay. Yes. So this, where's this gig? Oh, my gosh. Have you guys ever heard of Verge Fest? No. It's out in Sock Rapids. It's a... Verge Nest? Verge Fest. Oh, Verge Fest. So it started off as this farmer, Virgil. He had a birthday party celebration, and it started in his barn. He has all... Like, oh, my gosh. His barn is just full of antiques, and people cool. send him stuff from everywhere. And it's beautifully decorated, but he had his birthday party there, and then it just grew and grew and grew every year. And then I took over the Facebook page for that and said, well, we can make it public because he wanted more people to know about it. Yeah. And so every year, except for last year, um, he threw this party, and people would come, and we were a band there for three times 
And then when we couldn't do the full band because he wanted to change it up for his – because the, the same people come. You know, it's very underground. It's kind of really cool. And It's, like, exclusive. Yeah. That's cool, though. So, and it's packed. That is cool. And it's a huge crowd, and they're all out there just to have fun. They do they it every year? They supply food. They supply alcohol. It's just pay at the door, and it's just, it's pretty awesome. Grassroots, right there. And yeah. It's just, how many people do you think show up now or oh will gosh. show up maybe this year? Um, this year, they're because of COVID right. and everything. They're doing it kind of more underground so i probably shouldn't what time of the year do they do it (laughs) um they actually just uh it's usually april oh april oh in april yeah that's around his birthday yeah so that's coming up quick here Mm -hmm. so how many times have you played the show i think three four times so we did one acoustic and then i think we did a three full band okay um a great show yeah so the year before covid how many people do you think attended oh my goodness i don't even know how much the barn holds I couldn't even say. Sure. I I just know that it's like shoulder to shoulder to walk through. You're turning sideways and you're bumping into somebody. I imagine in that And it's one of the big barns, you know. Sock Rapids, that's got to be just a huge event. Yeah. I mean, all the hotels fill up with everybody that's coming in. So. Oh, wow. It's pretty cool. Like they're coming from all over the place. Yeah, they come from everywhere. Everywhere. Maybe next year that's got to be another place we have to put on our list to check out. Yeah. Well, she might, sure. she might have the inside tip on it. Yeah. I do, actually. <laughs> I run the Facebook page. I don't know if you can <laughs> so, tell here, but but uh, she's pregnant here. Oh, yes. This was, we opened up for Drew Baldridge, and this is um, the show that Sheila was supposed to do, but I ended up doing it, actually, um, was very pregnant there. I think I had a baby two days after this concert. <laughs> I was going to say, you got a bump going. Well, I'm sorry. It's because of the lighting and because of my eyes. Well, she's got Which black on, on purpose. Well, I wore a great outfit oh, to hide You're in the black? It. When you're straight She's on, on the left. She's yeah. on the left. Okay. So straight on, it doesn't look like I'm pregnant, but as soon as I turn sideways, it's like, you know, full nine months there. The basketball. Um, we got a little light hitting that. <laughs> yeah, we were dancing on stage, and when I got off the stage there, we did this at the caboose. Sure. Um, when I got off stage, people were coming up to me going, oh, my gosh, I, w- I couldn't even enjoy the show. I was so worried you're going to pop a baby out. <laughs> <laughs> How I'm far like, along oh. were you? I was nine months. Oh, you were nine months? Yeah. Oh, wow. And singing on stage. Yeah. Holy cow. She's like a superhero. We were dancing. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, they were worried during the I dances. guess most men can't appreciate that. No. Unless they're obviously married and their wife. Makes then they them. can maybe appreciate <laughs> a little bit. But right. guys that haven't been married and haven't had children. No. <laughs> no man. No man. No Husband man. or not can appreciate. No. Although it's, our, I've heard, it's our superpower. I'm just I, saying. Yeah, so I tell Emily. Well, it is a like, superpower. You guys are, you're like super. You make a human being inside your body. That's a superpower. Yeah, agreed. Like the, the birth part of it aside, body you builders. make a human. We're bodybuilders. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Bodybuilders. <laughs> That's what we do. So the first gig that yeah. that Joe and I worked together was Caboose. Yeah. You guys were playing, and we were kind of like your. The Rowdy Cowboy Show was playing in between the in between. groups. Oh, was it? Yeah. Cool. I'm trying to remember who that was. Was that Logan Mize? I'm trying to remember I who the so. gig was. It feels like Logan Myers. Danny says us, yes. Yes. She's giving us the gauze thumb. Killer Kyle, do you have any uh, record back there of uh, Shane's band that you can pull up on screen? Are there any ar- archives you can go into? And uh, if there's any video, we're not playing it because it's bad. <laughs> I'll take a I'll take a look and see what I can find. I yeah, put so the, I put the disclaimer out there. I am not a singer. I was not a singer. Yeah, well, I we don't have it. to listen to it. We can just. I just like to see. Yeah, a we can just of laugh band. at it. Yeah, I'm well, totally actually, good with that. I, I'm totally good with that. I should take I that laugh. back. I'd love to hear uh, the audio ends and the video and Ugh. see what the band looked like. See, the problem is, is I'm not going to get on a soapbox, but naturally, I'm a baritone. Okay. And we're doing all this like because it was hot at the time. We're doing all this Rascal Flat stuff, mm. so I'm singing way out <laughs> of my range. <laughs> right. And so it's you know my, I'm blowing my voice out all the time, you're, and and you're I'm trying to I, sing lead for Rascal and Flats. I, I, well, we were doing Rascal Flats covers. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I was doing Gary stuff, but not well. <laughs> well, who could? Gary. I mean that whole. You'd have to, not many. Uh, He's got a very crazy range. Even Gary had taken a break and made his other singer sing with him. He's like, "You need to do some lead." Yeah, this is hard. Right. Exactly. I think to get to that range, you'd have to wrap a rubber binder around your testicles. And I only got one left. That's what so. I do. That's what I do. <laughs> are we still talking about singing? Yeah, we are. 
You know, that's that's the that was the joke back in the days. You got to get a high note, pinch those knees together real hard. <laughs> oh my God. I have a friend in River Falls, Wisconsin, who is not a Rascal Flatts fan. What? And, you know, that's too bad, but yeah. it is what it is. They were huge. You can't please in, everybody. Like, the- they were they. Got, I mean, 2004 is kind of when they got on the scene. Yeah, yeah. They're one and of my they got faves. big in that late 2008. I love some of their songs. 2000, like six through 2012, they were monsters. Right. Life is a highway is one of my. You guys favorite had them at songs. We Fest like 50 times. I know. And me and him have had a lot of wonderful conversations about archery hunting. Yeah, he's a hell of an archer. Oh yeah, big we're, time. We're not gonna go down that road because we we have Joe. <laughs> yeah. I don't spend too much time going on that. I've way. never hunted. But so as you can imagine, being out of range, I was like. You know, pitchy would be a pretty significant understatement. Yeah. Trying to like hit, like doing life as a highway and all that stuff. Like you got to right. have, you know, it was yeah, not we good. Do that. We do that song. Actually, uh, I used to tell Lindsay, I want us to be like a female version of Rascal Flatts. Yeah. That was my goal. Well, you guys put on a great show. Thank um, you. Having seen you at a, at a bunch of different venues now. And, you know, when we, not now, but a little later in the show, I want to talk about some of the yeah. clubs that you've played and. We grew pretty fast. I was actually the first year that as soon as we came out and I launched the website, it took a while and I was getting everything prepared. I want to be prepared. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we launched, our first year was booked. And I can honestly say I did not call one person until last year. Everything that we've ever booked has been a phone call to us. You know, when you guys got big on the scene, there was not much for female country. It was like you guys and Allie Gray and... Christina Rain, you know, mm-hmm. because of the Whiskey Stone thing. Yeah. I was like, I'm trying to think of, like, who else? There were not many big female leads. Yeah. I, like, all I can think of is, like, bad girlfriends, but it was right. rock. And they're not country. And, and we were country. Yeah. So I can relate to that because, I'll tell you, as a former club owner, you know, I mean, if you're doing country music all of the time, it's refreshing to get the boys out of there and get the females in there, but... There wasn't always that big pool to choose from, right. even at the WeFest, which is something we're going to talk about. Uh, there wasn't a huge pool of women. Every year at the WeFest, we put our heads together, what females can we add? Because there's just m- way more yeah. male country entertainers than there are female. And there's always been female entertainers in there, and they were all, always huge. And Jill and I were just looking at the WeFest poster, trying to think of, how many female artists we have uh, as headliners. And even to my surprise, looking over the, do you want to go, do you want to do that right now? As long as we're talking about it? Yeah, we can definitely do that. Jill, why don't you bring that over? And uh, we might have Danny come out and focus the camera on the uh, poster. This is the first 25 years of the WeFest. And I was trying to think of female headliners. I mean, we've had every female you can think of. You probably can't name one that hasn't been there. Let's see. I think we can probably lean that right up in there, maybe. Anyway, uh, I, 83, 84, 85, very few females. Then in uh, 86, we had Loretta Lynn. And uh, I can't see them anymore. You ever otherwise. do any Loretta Lynn? Uh, yeah, we used to do the Cole Miner's Daughter. Jill, you didn't happen to make a, any list for me to look at, did you? I'm not. All right. Better talk to her about that. <laughs> and then this Jill, get better at mind reading. Was uh, Gail Sayers. Gail Sayers. I wow. can't believe I just said that. I was like, the running back? <laughs> <laughs> he was, that dude's amazing. He was at WeFest, and he was like number one in the NFL. Hall of Fame guy? Uh... Crystal Gale. Crystal Gale. Yes. <laughs> you can see Crystal Gale. As Danny, as long as we have you out here. See, the year before her was uh, Loretta Lynn. Yeah, there's Loretta. And then if you'll go to the next one. Uh, down below, a row. Down a row and left. There you go. There's Tammy Wynette. Yeah. She was a headliner. And the next one we had the who's Judds. That, hold on. Who's that bottom left on that one? That was Juice Newton. Oh, Juice. Oh, wow. That oh, would have been playing. fun to see. Oh, yeah. She was so crazy. Yeah, and then you can see the Judds on the next one, the, the Judds. top left area there. And then the next one was a big year for uh, females. We had Dolly and Barbara Mandrell. Mm-hmm. Nice. And the next year was Reba, along with Kenny Rogers and George Strait. That was a fun I don't even year. care that Reba's 100. I still think she's a knockout. She's yeah, amazing. She is. <laughs> she's amazing. And then that next one, I don't know if there was much for there. I remember the legend Emmy Lou Harris was there. Lori Morgan. Lori Morgan, right. And uh, go to the next one if you can, Danny. 
Thank you, dear. Um, the Winona, she was uh, pretty much the main one that you had year. Add Judd. <laughs> yeah, Judd Singular. <laughs> and then Tanya Tucker was there with Brooks and Dunn and Ray Charles. Trisha. And Patty Trish, yeah, yeah. Mrs. Garth Brooks. Yeah, and I think she made it two years in a row because I believe she's on this one along with Faith Hill. Is Faith Hill in her? Yes. Or is that Faith Hill? I see. It says Lori Morgan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Hey, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's close Shelby Lynn. Yeah, Shelby Lynn. She was one of my favorites. I loved Shelby Lynn. I played a song of hers for years and years. And yeah, then, 96, that's Faith Hill for Faith sure in the That's middle. Faith Hill, and uh, who else is the, the Kathy Matea, maybe? Kathy Matea. Martina's Mary, on that one, too. Yeah. In the, like, bottom section. And then if you go to the next one, all right, we'll go down to that one. Vince Gill, no female. Uh, Patty Loveless comes back, looks like. Leanne yeah. Walmack. Leanne, Leanne Womack. Womack, that's another So we know we've Sheree had them all. Austin. Danny, if you would just go all the way to the our right on that one, those two, uh, there's a female. Sorry, I'm having a hard time reading those, but it kind of, you know what? I think yeah. the next line down is maybe the last several years of this. Leanne poster. Rhymes, where did she end up? Yeah, she. Uh, I haven't heard her, her name in a long time. She, she was she? fun to have there. But then we got into the, you know, it was tough for the women, I think, Jill, to compete with, you know, guys like George Strait and Tim McGraw and Kenny Chesney and Alan Jackson and Toby Keith. and. Uh, well, you know what it was, yeah. Tom, is I think we've had this conversation, and Joe, he lived through this, um, that sort of shift in country where you went from this real traditional western, southern country sound mm -hmm. with the, you know, the lap steel or the pedal steel. And then all of a sudden you get all these like rock country guys like Blake and Kenny right. and there just wasn't any women at that point doing that sound. Yeah. Like Gretchen Wilson right. came in and that was amazing for females to be like, yes, yeah. finally a partier. You like, know, she can the party. females were so, so great. great at the end. Gretchen, of the Sarah Evans, like that whole. Oh. I mean, the, it kind of gives me goosebumps when I think of all these female inter and the fun interaction we had. Shall we with take them. this, please? And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, they were always such a highlight because, again, I'll, I'll reiterate back to what we originally were talking about. You know, the boys in country music are synonymous, but it was always so refreshing to get a Trisha Yearwood and uh, yeah. you know, Pam Tillis and just the list goes on and on. And even though there was more men performing, uh, the girls always shone. They were shining. Reba, yeah. I mean, man, she killed them. Yeah. Well, that was the thing with TFD is you guys sort of broke the mold on this perception of female lead. Because there were a few female, like Allie Gray, who was mm -hmm. just this female solo artist. And, you know, we tried to do something different in the fact that it was me and a female lead together. There okay. was not many groups doing that. Then all of a sudden you guys hit the scene and you got nothing but girls yeah. on the front of the stage. It was like, <laughs> okay, this is very different and super cool. Right. And people obviously gravitated to it. They did, and they loved that we had, you know, choreographed moves and that we didn't go in the back room for, you know, our breaks. I, you know, like we learned, go out and mingle with your audience. Yeah, that's they so smart. They came to see you. Go out and talk to them. Make them feel special. <laughs> yeah. Um, let them know that you know that they came for you. And, right. and so, and they'd come back because they'd be like, oh, it was and really did cool. Anybody they tell to you me. That? And they bring their friends. Did anybody tell you to do that? No, it's it's just what I learned. It's just like, common sense. Well, actually, no, I can't say that. Here's actually. some knuckleheads right here. <laughs> I know. Holy moly. Isn't that funny? Jordan and Sierra and who these other two fellows on the side? Is that the Rum River Isani? Oh, yeah. concert we opened up for the Josh Thompson. and Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Oh, my gosh. We had a lot of fun on that stage. I was sad that that was the last year they did it. <laughs> yeah. Which had nothing to do with you guys. Yeah. For the record. No, no, no. <laughs> actually, I think they did it one more year, but... We didn't, I think we weren't playing or something, but yeah, yeah, it was a good time. Uh, <laughs> so that you must have, I mean, literally your phone must've been ringing off the hook because in that first couple of years that you guys yeah. were really breaking into the local market, there was nothing like you out there. Yeah. So. It was a lot of fun. We had very, very busy. We were doing six shows a week sometimes. And then it got to a point where we were, you know, tiring ourselves out. And, um, some of our musicians were like, I can't play this much, you know, and 
I get it. So then we had to cut back and we decided we'd only do weekends and then maybe an acoustic Thursday and, and, you know, now that we have more babies yeah. <laughs> between Lindsay and I, yeah. we're just kind of, we're okay with, okay, every other weekend. And now we don't have to work so hard. You know, yeah. we feel we earned our dues and for you sure know, you have, we're making some good cash. So now it's fine to take a little break, but obviously COVID now did hit everyone's budgets and now when we're getting the call back, it's, it's, oh, you know, what were you doing? Yeah, we'll uh, work with you. What did you do I'm, during the whole COVID thing? Um, I actually, <laughs> I went into a podcast oh, that's like right. you guys. So yep. I thought, well, this, uh, I got actually asked to do it. Uh, Tony burning called me and said, Hey, I think you'd be really great for this country podcast that I have an idea for. And so I said, well, I'm willing to listen. And so he threw it at me and I said, I'm not good talking. And that's never been my thing. Like when I'm on stage, I have a microphone. It's it's weird. It's different. I'm in my element. You know, I can entertain fine. But you put a camera in front of me or something, I like get very nervous. So I thought to myself, okay, Joe, this is what you need. This is the perfect time. You're not doing anything. You're not busy. Right. So use this to hone this craft, you know, to be it's able to speak to people. Yeah. And to maybe be in front of a camera and not be nervous and stutter. Well, we did a lot of radio interviews. And I always told Lindsay, you have to talk. Because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I would stutter. It'd be hmm ha, and I'd hey, I tell dirty jokes all the time. <laughs> like it was bad. So well, you're doing great here, and I bet you don't well, even know you. where the cameras are. <laughs> no, so I'm we're not just looking. sitting here uh, yakking, and it's like I never even think about that. We have cameras no. on. You guys uh, make obviously. this very comfortable. You well, know, thank you. I have to say, you guys do a great job of making your thank guests you. feel welcome and comfortable. Well, so. your voice carries well, and thank you. Um, you're doing a great job, and she is classing up the joint. <laughs> with my purple boots immensely <laughs> they're lucky we showered today and then you got this beauty queen over here <laughs> who hasn't showered in weeks let me tell you <laughs> can't wait to get home <laughs> i got my walk of sheer shame here on <laughs> oh no. wow so they you know we wanted them on the jack friday slate for the longest time but they were so busy with their tour schedule they just couldn't get in studio and really progress their original music. Yeah. Why don't you tell the folks what the Jack Friday thing is? So Jack Friday Country Concert was a Jack Daniels-sponsored show that we'd put on annually, and it would always be on Black Friday, which is what we called it, Jack Friday. Right. Um, and it was really just about highlighting local country music, and in particular, folks that were doing original stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we had a, a ton of people that wanted to be on that didn't have original music, like TFD, you just didn't have any original stuff yet. Right. So when Joe and I would talk, I'd always be like, hey, you got to you know, get in the studio, cut some <laughs> original stuff. We want you on the stage. But And, and, then so, and we did. Yeah, it was like... I can't remember what it was. It's the summer of the year that you guys played the show. Mm -hmm. And she called me and she was like, we're going in the studio and we're going to, you know, cut some original. And I was like, you're on the slate. You know, I don't, if we have to bump somebody, we'll bump somebody, but you're on the slate. And they played the show. Good and they incentive. Good yeah. incentive. huh? It yeah, was. It. Yeah. We realized that there was a few shows and stages we wanted to play, but we couldn't until we were original. So I'm like, that's all we gotta do. Let's just do it. So we just went in and cool. Came out with a couple singles and we're like, yep, we got some. <laughs> so what was the first original? Our first original was Catch, and then I Ain't Crazy. Yeah, because we have I Ain't Crazy as yeah. your most recent single, right? Um, I Ain't Crazy. No, we have um, Daddy's Little Girl came out, and then Beer and Skinner, and then Two Weeks. So Two Weeks is our latest single. Okay, cool. And that one was fully 100% written by us. So. And are those tracks all on your like YouTube page, or where do people find yeah, those? Yeah, they're on our YouTube, the Farmer's Daughter's Band. You have to put band behind it. And then um, also on any streaming devices, so Spotify, Google, Amazon, all that stuff. Well, we're going to um, have to take a break here because we got to keep the lights on to get some sponsored role. And while we're in the break, we can maybe have Kyle go to that YouTube page, The Farmer's Daughter's Band, um, and pull up that two weeks single and get that played in the break. Nice. So give people a little taste of what your original stuff is like. Okay. So... Um, stick around, folks, because coming up after the break, we are going to get a little deeper with Lady Joe about uh, some of the fun shows that they've played. We'll share some fun stories about that stuff and some of the crazy fans you guys have, because you definitely have some <laughs> loyal and crazy fans. So loyal. And uh, what we've got going on this year and going forward. Right. So Lady Joe, after the break. And uh, give uh, RJ a chance to catch his breath now that we've 
grilled him <laughs> on half of his life. And uh, so in the in the commercial break, as we mentioned, we're going to play his other single, Heartbreak. I think you guys are going to love it. I love a yeah. good country ballad, TK. Absolutely. Um, you know, love me gonna... some steel guitar. I oh, absolutely yeah. absolutely love me oh. some steel guitar. Yeah, got to have lap steel to be country, right? Absolutely. Yep. Stick around right after the break. Our geograph right back. I love you After all that we've been through I'll miss you And I know you'll miss me too I wish that We could have made it work Nobody said it was gonna be easy Or how much it would hurt Why does there have to be heartbreak? Guys like me don't take this very well. Why do I have to see your face? Every time I lay myself down, it's like hell. Dreaming of you, thinking of you. Wishing you were here on the ride of this bed Why does there have to be heartbreak? Well, I packed up And I'm headed down the road Never thought I'd Ever walk outside your door You didn't say much that lonesome in your eye I wonder, darling Is this for sure goodbye? Why does there have to be heartbreak? Guys like me don't take this very well Why do I have to see time I lay myself down as I can Dreaming of you, thinking of you Wishing you were here on the ride of this bed Why does there have to be All these sad, sad songs on the radio That old saying, if you love her, gotta let her go Maybe I just don't have to be heartbreak Guys I may don't take this very well Why do I have to see your face Every time I lay myself down it's like hell Dreaming of you Thinking of you Wishing you were here on the ride Does there have to be heartbreak? Boots and Backstraps is proudly brought to you by Homes by Shane. Making your move with the Homes by Shane team means an unparalleled customer service experience. That level of service is the foundation of this REMAX Results referral-based business. Our driven team of experts communicate with their clients every step of the way, ensuring a memorable experience from the first conversation through your closing day. Go to homesbyshane.com for more information. Let's get you home. If you would like to sponsor the Boots and Backstraps podcast or you have an interest in joining our team, Send us an email to Boots and Backstraps Podcast at gmail.com. Now there's coffee on my nights and flowers in my kitchen, kisses on my forehead. What am I missing just yesterday? 
I said we were finished Cause in two weeks You'll be tearing me down In two weeks Still in my crown This routine makes it easier to stay Now there's no time Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Welcome back from the break, everybody. For those of you guys that uh, are watching on the video platforms, YouTube, Spotify, and uh, what's the other one that's video? Facebook. Facebook. Thank you, Facebook. I just got to see the video for Farmer's Daughters Two Weeks. The Farmer's Daughters, sorry. Yeah. Two Weeks. Yeah. What a great video. What a great voice. Thank you. Yeah. Don't they sound oh, amazing? Oh, man. That's the first time I've heard you sing, and that was oh. beautiful. Wonderful. Well, thank you for listening. <laughs> My wife was listening in, and she's a singer herself. And, and How did you feel about that, dear? It was great. It was great. Great, great, great. <laughs> thank you. That was, this is uh, how you stay married. Yeah, I know, right? Your wife's just, not even in the podcast, yes. but you bring her in. Yeah, but she's yeah. sitting on off stage, off camera. She did. She wanted to see the video. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Great video. Where was that thank done? Thank you. It was actually um, done. Voodoo Video did it for us. They put together just a whole bunch of clips. I kind of just guided them on what oh. I wanted to be in the video. And then... Um, so they, you didn't hire the, the... No, we didn't hire the actors. Oh, okay. But doesn't it look so perfect? It looks They're like so, you hired all those people. I know. So we got a lot of compliments on that. So I just... Voodoo Video, that's, that's all them. Voodoo Video Live. I'll be darned. So if you want a, a lyric video... <laughs> Yeah, tell us how that how that project came together because this is that's your is it third single you guys released? Um, that is fourth or fifth. Fourth or fifth. Yeah, we have Beer and Skinner and Catch. I ain't crazy, but my daddy is, and then Daddy's Little Girl, and then Two Weeks. Okay, and we have one coming out this spring called Drink It In. Um, so yeah, uh, that came about. I just started writing music finally. Yeah. yeah. Yes. For you. I know, I know. So Did you write that? Yes. Oh, it's amazing. So <laughs> that's you. as good as anything I've heard or seen on the radio in a long time. Oh, thank that you. That is as good as anything. She's I've blushing seen. now. She matches the sofa. I'm like, oh. <laughs> that's that that's was why I wear red pants. So the people that can't couldn't didn't see the video, were they hearing it? Yes. Yep. Good. So all the platforms that the that you know that our uh, podcast is on, they'll hear the song. Good. But for those three that 
three platforms have the video so they'll see it well, i'm oh, glad nice. everyone got a chance to hear that that was good stuff yeah Thanks. great yeah so my um old guitar player i'd say old uh, mark Gangi, he's no longer with us uh for this year he's still alive <laughs> i was just gonna say but he's alive he's alive <laughs> uh he's just not playing with us this this year um but he had come to me and said we did like uh the midwest uh music organization they changed the name right midwest country music music organization. country organization yeah it used to be MWCMA, yes. and now it's Midwest CMO. Yes, okay. Yeah. So the organization, they put together this uh, event where um, we would come and listen to songwriters tell their stories and how they do what they do. And we went back to our hotel that we had that night, and he's like, we got to do this. We just got to start writing. And he played this riff on the guitar, which actually you couldn't really hear in the video. But um, And I was like, oh, my gosh, I think I have the perfect song to this. And um, so... Yeah, he just sent it to me uh, when I went home, and then I just went through and I wrote it. I think within a half hour because I already had the song written in my songbook. Yeah. But I was just putting it so it would like match the phrasing of like the music and. Yeah. And then we just produced it from there with everybody. Put in the, the band. other pieces in there, mm-hmm. and and how long yeah. ago did you do that? Um, two weeks was probably written a year and a half ago, um, but it was released just last year. Wow. In November. I believe that, that song deserves some national exposure. I think really, yeah, that would be nice. It was a very personal story, so I've been in a lot of, of those relationships. So, well, there's a million girls that there. can relate to that. There's hundreds of millions of women I think that would relate to that story as well. Yeah, especially in this day and age. Yeah, for a while it was like a burden, you know, to be like to hear why are you still there why are you still there and then when i kind of learned about well it's the routine that's keeping me there the routine there's something about the routine it's consistent right so that consistency was like that's why i'm here you know so um just had to put it down on paper the familiarity right yeah right yeah it was easy to stay really hard yeah yep boy isn't that the truth i mean what we just struck on right there resonates through millions of people's lives of and unfortunately, and sometimes fortunately, it's a good thing, but unfortunately, sometimes it's not a good thing. Yeah, that's not. So if you're a guy out there and you're listening, don't be a douche canoe. Yeah. <laughs> Treat your women with respect. Well, there's a women out there too, canoe. yeah. Tom and I will find you with our <laughs> stockpiles of weapons. You'll look like this. Yeah, exactly. We got a little, there's a couple spaces on the walls in here. Not many, but there's a few. <laughs> You'll look like one of these, yeah. <laughs> and we'll, we'll put you in a ridiculous pose like... Like that bear. <laughs> right. Are you saying that bear is in ridiculous my, He used to be my ex. <laughs> I've seen mounts where they got the rear end coming out of the walls. Yeah, you could do that too. With an arrow sticking right in the middle. Those are cute. Oh. So well, we good were, job. Good job. Thank you. You guys have a, uh, there's you and your partner. Yep. Yep. This Her is, lens. This is us at Raleigh's. Uh, the audience there is so joint. amazing. They just get yep. so involved. They'll grab your tambourines and just start playing and come up and... It's a great club. Yeah, I know. It is a great club. Definitely love it. They had John Anderson up there uh, last... Not not last summer, the summer before. And uh, Lynn and I went up there and I got to introduce John and we got the whole audience up there swinging. uh, Well, you and John go way back. Yeah, we do. And great guy. I love him. I love him and I love his music. Who does... I mean, that... That huge comeback that he had yeah. when he came out with Seminole Wind and Yep. Oh, that was a great song. He, I could sing all I could sing I could listen to him all day long. I have him a sad story Strait. about Raleigh's. They this whole time they've been you know, they have their national national acts come out and so I was like always telling them, if you ever have anybody that, you know, you need us to open up for, we we would love to. And then finally we got the call and it was for Tanya Tucker and she's what? one of my idols and I was like oh my gosh, let me look, you know, and I'm looking, I'm like, we're already booked and we were booked and it was a huge festival. So I couldn't cancel because it was, you know, not as great, but I had to turn it down and I was so sad. But then like COVID happened and I think they had to put off the concert. So I was like, oh, so then COVID happened and they put (laughs) off their show. But what about the big show that you were attending? Yeah, everything was put off. What was the big show? I don't remember now, but... (laughs) Yeah. But I just remember I had to turn it down, and that was, like, killer for me. You mentioned Wii Fest earlier. Do you guys play Wii Fest? No, but that was why I got into this country band. 
was I was like, I'm in a, I used to go to WeFest all the time and I'd meet my parents there. They'd camp there all the time in the VIP and I'd be off, you know, right at the Anderson's farm right across the street. Yeah. Um, Lynn would let me camp on her ground. So I was there every year for about eight years. And then um, it was just a dream. So I was like, I'm going to play we fest one day. I'm gonna have a country band. I have to be country because I want to play that stage. Well, you might know wow. somebody. So for years, I've been. I used to go with Tom Claypack and um, Bob Marks. I don't know Bob Marks. Yeah, Bob Marks um, is who I'd camp with all the time. So uh, I know a Bob Marks. Robert Marks. Yeah. And how is he similar in age to you? No. Older. Yes. From uh, the Roseville area. Yeah, in the military, he was a. Uh, yeah. yeah, I know Bob. Same Bob Marks. He's Big Bob. Big Bob. Big Bob. Um, Hi, Big Bob. Who don't you know, TK? You know, <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Gail Sayers. People. He didn't know me Gale until today. Sayers. Yeah. He, do, he doesn't know Gail Sayers. Yeah. Gail Sayers. Crystal Gail. <laughs> I'm just so embarrassed. You know what's funny is as long as we've been friends, every time we go somewhere, we hang out a fair amount. He always runs into people he knows. Everywhere we go, it doesn't yeah. even matter. We can be in a totally different state, mm-hmm. and he runs into people he knows. I'm just like, how in the world do you know this person in Montana or wherever, you know? My wife and I were having our honeymoon in Aruba. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're in a bar. Hey, Tomcat. <laughs> Our wife's like, can't we get away from these yeah. people? Lynn's confirming. She says it happened. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. This is way too much about That's me. Awesome. She was probably pissed because she's like, we can't even go to Aruba. <laughs> right. she, she never gets pissed, but she was like, she's just kind of shaking her head. We can't even go to some island that no one even knows about. Do you guys have bets now? Like, I'm putting $10 down saying so no, nobody knows no, you. We don't think about that stuff. <laughs> you know, Jill, I've said this a thousand times, and I've said it a couple times on our pad, podcast, you know, I've owned a couple of clubs, dance clubs, and I've owned a couple of restaurants. And between those and doing the Rowdy Cowboy Show and doing the Wee Fest, I've always said there's a fair amount of people that know who I am, mm-hmm. and they all have a drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a problem if you don't kind have wearing that drink. one out. Exactly. You uh, know, here, here. More of a solution. But so that's but, enough about me. I don't know how we got onto that. Well, I was just going to say, before we went to break, we were talking a little bit about the power of women in country. Yeah. And in the, you know, the local market, especially because when TFD kind of broke that mold to say, we're just going to have this female led dual or triple, you know, for that brief period um, act, there was not much of that around. So how was that for you and trying to like get the market used to what you're doing and, the reception that you got from people when you guys played shows? It was actually really well received and maybe people longed for it. And, um, we would get requests for a lot of male songs. So we started throwing in cause I have a lower voice. So I was like, well, I can do Jason LD and I can do, you know, yeah. so I, we would start throwing you could that do in. Rascal Flats. <laughs> yeah, we did Rascal Flats. Yeah. And then we would, um, it was like, you can't please them all because then you get someone being like, well, you guys are females. You should sing female songs. I'm like, I can't. I can't please everybody. I'm just, no, you know, you but. No, well, certainly don't worry about that. Please yourself. <laughs> yeah. And he means that on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Do what's true to your heart. How's that? Yes, that sounds more clean. Follow your dreams. <laughs> pursue your passion. Reach for the stars. Reach for the stars. Back yeah. to PG-13. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good. And we got a lot of great shows. I think we, like, we played the Caboose, which was really hard to get into, you played the I booze guess. a few times, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. And I didn't know it was like a hard thing. We actually had a house gig at, um, oh my gosh, it's going to leave me. It's Minneapolis. Prince used to play there all the time. Bunkers. Started to be, yeah, Bunkers. We had a house gig at Bunkers for a while. And that was our first year ever being alive. And Dr. Mambo's <laughs> combo. Yeah. So um, like looking back now, I'm like, wow, we were really blessed and had a lot of great shows. We opened up for David Lee Murphy and wow. Ala- oh, no, really? not Alabama. Shadon- Sher- <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, Shenandoah, yeah, and then Josh Thompson, Drew Baldridge. And Did you just Logan say Alabama? Lies. No, I meant to say Shenandoah. Oh, we had a chance for Alabama, but then they ended up changing their show to something else. So, okay, so we didn't, you know, confirm that. But David yeah. Lee Murphy, David dust Lee on Murphy. the bottle. Yeah. yeah. Did he ever do anything other than that? No. I re- we <laughs> had him at the he, did, but... he does. He has a lot of great songs, but other singers sing right. Them. We had him at the we I met him at the We Fest one year and he was worn out. 
Yeah. They had him touring every night in a different state. And he was going from state to state to state. And by the time he got to the Wee Fest, I said, man, you look tired. And, I was, and his manager jumped right in. He said, oh, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. And he did a great show. And what a huge song that was for him, Dust on the Bottle. Yeah. Still Every is. college kid in America singing that song. Every country enthusiast was singing that song. Right. We just added it this year. So I haven't we'll heard his name in a while. Summer. Good deal. Yeah, he was he was nice. It's nice. We didn't get pictures with him, but <laughs> oh, he's probably too had to take off right after the show. Um, yeah, or maybe he was just tired. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Little of both. Maybe because we didn't pay the VIP. I don't know. We just opened up for him. <laughs> oh yeah. So, who was your favorite, or what was your favorite stage to play, or favorite club to play? Oh my gosh. Without, you know, obviously you're not yeah, alienating it. I love, yeah, I love all our clubs, all our venues. I think I can just say my favorite place to play is the people that love, love us. Like, that just have fun. Like, Raleigh's is one of them. So every time we go there, everyone looks great. They come in, they're dressed nice. Um, they dance and they get involved in the audience and, or with us. So I like that. Can I, like, like name drop a stage? Yeah, that go you're ahead. probably not thinking of right now? Yeah. <laughs> How about the Isle Muni? Oh yes, they love you and Isle. They do, they do, and we actually played Miriam and, and the Wharf there all the time. The Wharf, yeah, the Wharf and Barnacles. Like we used to play with Mirror Image. That used to be my area. That's where I started. Oh, musically, crazy. okay. So it was kind of full circle when we got called back up there. So for those folks who don't know where Isle is, Isle is on the like south side of Malax Lake. Mm-hmm. Yep, and uh, um, Danny G, our produ- producer, her family has like 50 properties on the south side of that lake, it turns out. Oh, nice. So we go up there every year, and when we're up there and we run into people, they're always asking, you know, is RCS TFD going to be a thing again? Because <laughs> yeah. they, they, like, open for you or something? Sure. Set the stage for mm-hmm. you? You know what? I think we should do that again, if I'm being honest. Yeah, that was the one show I missed. I'm in. What? You yeah. weren't there? No, I wasn't there. I was I was out with the baby. Oh, okay. So that was one <laughs> that um, I believe Sheila did do. Okay. With you guys. But I heard it was a great party and you guys had so much fun and I was like so sad. Yeah, that was Danny and Danny should, was an MC role. We should do that role. again. We yeah. should do that again. KG was on with the wheels. <laughs> I remember him telling me the story about because it was outside and it was during like Mayfly season. So he oh, said the light post next to him, like right next to him. They're so If you looked at it, it just looked like the pole was covered in fur. Yep. Oh, because no. there's so many Mayflies it's on like that It's like a horror movie. Yeah. yeah. The pole's moving. Have you ever right. seen the mayflies on the Mississippi River uh, where they have had to bring out the snow plows what? down around Lake City? Oh, it's they'll get, Cause they get this deep, literally a foot deep over the roads, and they mm-hmm. have to come out, and, then, and then it turns into goo. Yeah. And it's slippery. It's like driving on ice. They literally <laughs> sometimes have to bring out. <laughs> Speaking of make it weird, Joe, <laughs> that just got weird. <laughs> they, they literally as sometimes they have to bring out the snow plows during the Mayfly. Hatch. That sounds like fun to me. I'll get my four-wheel drive and go yeah. drive around the bug guts. <laughs> Tidbits by a Tomcat. <laughs> it's a new segment to the show. Yes. Don't worry, we'll credit you in the we'll give you Thank some you. credit in the credits. <laughs> Weird tidbits. <laughs> <laughs> it could be like a Mr. Rogers kind of thing, just right. focusing on Tom. The and... Mayfly hatch. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you. Tough time for fishing on the Mississippi River. We So we always, <laughs> we go up right after 4th of July, and uh-huh. and sometimes that, that Mayfly season gets extended. Yeah. A, a couple years ago, because they have a beach up there, uh, what is it called? Not Father Hennepin. What's the beach called, Danny? She doesn't know. She's pretending like she can't hear me. We should just have her join the couch. <laughs> yeah, she almost should. Yeah, so anyway, so there's a beach that we always go to when we're up there to bring the kids and all that stuff. And a couple of years ago, the mayflies were so bad that you had to go 50, 75 feet out, even though it's not that deep that far out, to right. get away from them because they're just, the shoreline is, even the water is so full of, Ew. we'll call them expired I encourage mayflies. you to research the mayfly hatch. They sit underwater for like, I believe it's nine years, and what? then they come up, they hatch, and then they die. Yeah, their life cycles. I thought short. my life was exciting. <laughs> Killer Kyle, look up the uh, mayfly hatch. I mean, it's just crazy. They are they breed for a day or two days. Well, down that's normal. Settle down into the mud for nine years, and they come up and they hatch and they die. I don't. It's the craziest thing. That is crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. 
What a weird tidbit to, to throw out there, though. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I think weird tidbits are cool. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Speaking of weird things, and forgive me, this is totally off the subject. I'm watching a new television show. You, you didn't just meet us. Like, we're good with weird. <laughs> Speaking okay. of things, and he points to you. <laughs> There's a new television program on, I don't know, one of the Discovery Channels. Uh, intro, um, true and false facts about American history. Oh, interesting. Oh, and, they, and the one that I just watched was all about the Americans coming to America and the fact that people thought there were no people there where there were millions and millions of Indians that had thousands of tribes all over and they were warring and they were living mm-hmm. coexistently. But like one of the facts is that they didn't really, we didn't really, uh, the white man, I should say, didn't really come in and kill a lot of the Indians. Uh, they we prefer brought, the term salty and American. Yeah. What did you, oh, saltine. <laughs> Crackers. <laughs> it's hard to have a conversation with you. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, they, the germs that they brought is what really devastated the Indian population. And these things with the gunslingers and the duels in the street, it never happened. And there was never a building that had a hotel, a gambling hall, and a bar, and uh, the ladies of the night. That never happened. If they were gambling, they were in a different building. And it's just the most fascinating show and it's dispelling all these myths that Hollywood has brought into our mindset. Right. And then we think, Oh, that's the way it was. It's right. not even close to the way it was. Rewriting history. Yeah. So that's a pretty interesting show. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of scary. They them. want to get rid of history class. Then if oh, we're learning man. wrong history, <laughs> oh, yeah. keep it in the school. And <laughs> yeah, we got that notice in the mail about the uh, Minnesota department of education and their plans for the curriculum for the 2021-2022 school year. Yeah. And going forward, we were like, okay, private school. Yeah. We're done. So exactly. we, we made that decision pretty quick. Not doing that anymore. It's, uh, it's certainly there are things about history that we need to learn. But when you take a third of what the kids are being educated on kindergarten through their senior year and dedicate it to any one subject, that's a big problem. Yeah. Like, there's so much more that we need to be teaching kids. I mean, mm-hmm. teach them how to balance a checkbook. Teach them what a savings account is. Teach them how to... Be kind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's start there. Exactly. I love that. Manners. Yeah. Yeah. So now what's what this, got? Joe? Oh, my gosh. This is Toby Keith. This must have been one of your auditions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Toby Keith's. I miss that place. Yes, I know. I was so sad when it closed down because I feel like a lot of country bands wanted to be in there and on that stage and they never got that chance but we were so lucky that we got their new year's eve show and um a few other ones so we had a lot of fun there do you have any idea what song you were singing here um probably not probably here for the party or something like that you can see that it's all gals across the front of that thing and they're all singing it so (laughs) yeah what are those red things in their hands, though? What is that? Red solo cup. <laughs> <laughs> They're my friends. Toby's song. Yeah, they are. <laughs> no doubt. Mostly friends, right? Yes. Sometimes they're like your worst enemies. Did you guys ever uh, hit up Toby Keys? We did, yeah. RCS okay. played Toby's probably six or eight times. Okay. We, we, did, uh, we opened a couple times there for acts that they had, and then they gave us a string of about six like midweek gigs i'm sure. pretty sure that uh rcs ready cowboy show was supposed to do one of the last show well we didn't know they were shutting down but didn't you guys show up and the doors were locked no actually what happened with that is um it was sunday i don't all right i don't want to speak ill of the dead so you have to kind of like we have to navigate this carefully but we'll just say we got the word that they were being less than good about paying their acts integral integral that's good they're being less than integral and so we we killed the show okay. we said we're we're just not going to play because we had heard from some other acts that they were either not getting compensated or being given ious essentially okay. and we were like uh no oh that's hard yeah we're not going to do that it was a a real bad deal because that club had some as you said some oh it had some pull like really good pull yeah that's they had too some bad. big names in there too yeah so that was a fun club. Yeah, it's too bad that that thing flushed the way that it did. And I think it's still sitting there available, isn't it? I, don't, I haven't been there. So. There's, there's nothing there. Yeah. Buy it? And that's how you long has that been? Five there? years, six years, seven years? Do you guys years? want to buy it? TK, buy it. Come on now. 
boots and back straps. Boots and back straps. Let's go. We're in. Let's get a backer. Be like Richard Rawlings with the gas monkey garage thing and just start gas monkeying everything. (laughs) Be the B and B on everything. Heck yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you remember uh, a girl from uh, northern Minnesota? It's a girl that I saw in a club in Middle River, way, way up north, northwestern part of the state. She was there performing, and just her and her sisters, and they were from, uh, like, Rosso, Minnesota, and they were killing it. They were just like, wow. And I introduced myself, and she introduced me to her mother and father who were there, and I said, I'd like you to play at the Wee Fest. They were that good. I mean, they were just killer. Yeah. Well, they did, but I can't remember. I remember her name was Ashley. Um, do any of you guys remember, and maybe you folks that are listening, someone's knowing who I'm talking to or about. Killer Kyle, she used to play the uh, kicking country, kicking up country. Ashley. Or... Ashley Bouchard? No. Um, she was big. She wound up in Nashville. Okay. She had... Uh, a half a dozen CDs. She wound up marrying Lori Morgan's um, son, who was, what was Lori Morgan's husband's name that died? Keith Whitley. Keith Whitley, yeah. Forgive me, I'm moving slow here. He's an amazing singer. See, I, that was like, I could do yeah. a Keith Whitley song Tell and, Lori I love her. and be right on there. But, but if the, you take me up on The reason I'm bringing this whole four, thing up is because Ashley she McBride. was sitting... Ashley what? McBride? No. Okay. No, she's from what? Ashley Hewitt. Ashley Hewitt, Hewitt. the Hewitt sisters. Thank you. Crookston, Minnesota. Yeah, they're from Crookston, Minnesota, and the whole family, I mean, they were homeschooled, and I had her on stage, and I was interviewing her, I was talking to her. I said, well, there's your mom and dad, and I said, who are all those other people? Well, those are my brothers and sisters, and there were 18 of them. Wow. Must be Polish Catholics. you have, (laughs) she says, yeah, I've got 18 brothers and sisters, and... They were all homeschooled by their mom. Wow. And I'm like, I'm just being blown away. I'm like, yeah. and there, she was so talented. I encourage you to look, her, look up. her up. She moved to happened. Nashville, did some national stuff with Keith Whitley. She married Keith Whitley's son. Okay. And uh, that's the last I heard of her. But the reason I'm bringing this whole story up is because she was sitting in a crowd at the Wee Fest, and she said, someday I'm going to play that stage. Just like you yeah. were sitting in the crowd. And when you said that, that kind of reminded me of her. And maybe there's some other people. You know, it was certainly a big inspiration for a lot of people to perform. Maybe there's some young guys out there that wanted to play on that stage and wound up. It reminds me of a Travis Tritt song, hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. Someday. Yep. Definitely agree. Someday I'm going to be a star. Yeah, that's cool. You never so anyway. know what you're going to get when you go into the vault over here. Oh, I, I appreciate it. Great, I love it. Some great stuff <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I, it's fun that uh, I can sit here after being retired for so long that we can have guests that jar my memory breaks and shake out the cobwebs, and <laughs> I can expound uh, uh, relatively decently on some of these topics. And, yeah, and we good. have it's, our own little head voice to help us. Yeah, it's really fun for me. <laughs> so I hope it's good for the show. Yeah, it is. So TFD, um, you guys, you said you have a single coming this year? Yes. Okay. It's called Drink It In. And I think, well, we just got the file back. So we listened back and we're just making a few corrections. Um, so we're hoping within the next month and a half, we'll have it out before summer hits is our goal. Okay. Because um, it's just kind of one of those like laid back, sit in your car, kind of drive songs. Sure. Um, we didn't do anything like really vocally like crazy on it. So everyone can sing along to it. And um, yeah, it's going to be really great. I'm uh, super excited about it. Um, Derek Toomey wrote it and he's one of my favorite writers. Uh, he's written uh, I Ain't Crazy But My Daddy Is and yeah. Beer and Skinner and Catch. So I love working with him and uh, his writing skills. So we're super excited. I have to ask a question. Yes. What are you saying? I'm not hearing it. It sounds like Leonard Skinner, but it's not. Beer and Skinner. Beer, beer and Skinner. Oh, Beer and Skinner. Yeah. That's their name of their single. Because you say it kind of fast, and I'm like. I know. I, I do that And it's sometimes. not your fault. It's probably because I can't hear with, it, with okay. beans anymore. Sure, yeah. Beer and Skinner. It's a great title. Yeah, it's a great song. It's Those really two fun. things tend to go pretty good together. <laughs> Can you sing it? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, Put her on the spot like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, when you guys record these, is there like one studio that you're using to cut these? Or are you 
working out a... We kind of, right now, because we haven't done so many songs, we're, you know, we're still, we're testing out everybody and seeing where we like to go and who we like and who's easy and what's more comfortable for us. Um, so the first songs, the first two songs that we did, uh, we did with Jesse um, in, his, uh, in his basement, and then he moved to Nashville, so we could still work with him, but... She's talking about Jesse, is it Ernster? Yeah. So uh, Heidi was mentioning right. him because he was with their band for a right, while. Right. Mm-hmm. And then now, now he's in Nashville. Yeah. Talented dude. Yeah, so talented. Um, and then he also played on our songs as well. And then we've tried out uh, Jeremy Schreifels. Yep. And we used his studio. He did two weeks for us. Another and, good guy. Yeah, and Baron Skinner. And then we are now with another one, Matt Grosso um, with uh, Cloverleaf studios and he did daddy's little girl and he's doing our new song right now oh, Drink fantastic it so we'll eventually settle maybe but we're, we're spreading the love too you know give everybody work yeah and you do have to kind of experiment a little to see like you said where you feel most comfortable yeah because all of these guys are very competent studio engineers mm-hmm. and can give you a great product yeah but there's more to it than just you know, can you run the machine? Yeah. It's like no complaints about it. We just want to find out like who's everybody happy with and, and then where are we most comfortable, um, having our horrible vocals come out. (laughs) That's my department. (laughs) Leave me alone over there in the corner. They weren't horrible. As far as I'm concerned, I I thought that was a lovely song. Thank you. (laughs) So are you in the process right now behind the scenes of writing anything that maybe you're going to be doing studio time with later in the year or? You know, that's really hard because I have a lot of songs that I've written and I just don't know if they're like live songs. You know, it's coming out of a really big heartbreak that I just went through. Yeah. So it's not like they're really happy or even someone would want to dance to. Maybe someone would want to drink to it yeah. instead in the privacy of their own you home with their You need some of those tears. on the album. Um, Country music was founded on drinking songs, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so they're very... Um, personal and heartbreaking and i guess it's just i have to figure out do i want the world to hear them um but with the two weeks i I realized that a lot of people came to me after and they said this song this song and i was like oh so it's inspiring and it is helping people i'm not alone and so that helped me having people come back to me so i was like maybe i should record these so i'm still on the table of i don't know who needs to hear this (laughs) it's a subject that that maybe gets viewed too quickly as taboo but as we've talked about already in this show that it needs to be talked about i could sit yeah. here and list off 50 songs that people thought were taboo or too personal that became monster monster hits if it's something that is totally personal to you and it's totally ingrained yeah. in your heart you absolutely should put it out there because those are the songs that resonate with people that's not I mean, you could go and do the personal. you know yeah. cookie cutter songs and fun fun this and that and we that. talked right. about some of those in the break joe <laughs> yeah the dude. beer and bonfires the tight fitting jeans like yeah. all yeah. that stuff it's if there's overdone. something that dear to your heart and it's that personal put it out there and see you who might fun. be you probably will be shocked at, at how it resonates with so many people yeah okay. those are the ones you want to put out there okay my gosh if they're that near and dear or even heartbreaking to you yeah that's what that's what hank williams did and that's what so many hours after him did you know it's to me you've got different segments of the country music fan base Mm -hmm. you got those folks that are coming out to your shows and they're running up a monster bar tab and they're going to be on the dance floor all night but you got to remember that there's this other maybe not half but half of the audience that really listens to the lyrics and really appreciates that you're pouring your heart out on the paper. Sure. You know, like two weeks. I mean, the whole time I'm, I'm not tapping my toe. I'm listening to the words and just soaking it in. Cause I'm like, what an awesome tune, you know, that clearly this is something that was personal to you. And clearly yeah. you, it's you just taking your real life lived experience and putting it out into lyrics. So right. that's awesome. Like I would buy that single all day. I look forward to hearing <laughs> it's my ninety nine on iTunes right now. <laughs> I think it's 99 cents, but oh, go yes. ahead. I'm a little generous. It's on sale. <laughs> the TFT sale. I like it. Yeah. So what's on the schedule for 2021? What are you guys planning to, to do? 2021. So uh, Lindsay is pregnant with her third baby, yes. as we said before. What's her due date, by the way? August 
sometime in August. Okay, so you got a couple of months where you can still perform. Right. And so you got a high bar to meet after you on stage at nine months. I know. Two years in a row. Come on, girl. <laughs> so um, <laughs> all our shows from last year actually just transferred over to okay. this year. So we're not really taking any other bookings except for acoustic shows that we want to throw in. Yeah. Um, so, and because uh, she is pregnant, we're not going to travel far or do anything. So everything's really close by. The farthest show we have is Brainerd, and that's July 10th. And um, we're open up for Diamond Rio and John Connolly. Whoa. Fun. Yeah. So we're super oh, excited for Iconic Fest. That's a Fest. big show. Yeah. John Connolly, one of the nicest guys in the business. He just looks like a sweetheart. Oh, His he music, is a sweetheart. Oh, I can't oh, wait. And so are the guys from Diamond Rio. My mm-hmm. goodness. What a fun show. We've got a lot to do this summer. We've got to go and see her. We've got to go and see other guests that we've had on. We're going to have a full summer, I think. Yeah, yeah we're at this place now with the, the podcast where we're talking about doing some remotes and yeah. even starting to mix in some actual live episodes. Yes. Rather than our you know released post kind of thing. But Boots, okay. backstraps, and road trips. Road trips. I like it. Giddy up. And road trips. Nice. Come on now. So what else as far as the schedule fun. is concerned? Do you have a pretty full summer so far? Um, It's... It's a little busy. It's not super full, but um, busy, I guess, for us and um, for a pregnant lady. Yeah. <laughs> so we have um, street dances, and then so we have Isani Street Dance, North Branch Street Dance, um, and then we're still pending on the Isani County Fair. We'll see. Um, and then what time of year is the Isani Fair? I think that's uh, is that August June. or July? I think, I think it's. June. I, I was going to say, I think it's June because it's, it's like it ties into the rodeo. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, it's June. Well, we could probably make that North June Branch 25th game. or something. Yeah. I was and like, then they June 19th is Midsummer Days. We love Midsummer Days. Obviously, it's our hometown. So, like, the crowd is just so fun to play your hometown. Yeah. And we always said we will, like, we will honor our hometown bars big or small we don't care because we get a lot of people like why would you play that and it's like that's where we started singing yeah. this is our start this is where we met we will sing anywhere here in our case small change your small. attitude mister yeah. like, play the little bars <laughs> in our case little and small is relevant <laughs> exactly <Yeah. laughs> speak for yourself there tk so funny story for your you. wife's over there like yeah we don't have big bars <laughs> <just> here <laughs> we don't have many one of my favorite places on the planet um it, and I'm not sure that either of you have been there, but Fort Worth mm-hmm. in the stockyards. Oh, I've been down there. Never for an act or anything. So the, some of the most famous country bars in the country are in that Fort Worth stockyards oh, I, area. Yeah. One of them is called the White Elephant. And this is the honky tonk of honky tonks. The entire ceiling in this club is covered in a dust, but also in cowboy <laughs> hats of all these famous country people whether it's a country singer or it's a rodeo person or you know an actor that you know like john wayne you know all these country people how are they affixed are they fixed upside down or? yeah like nailed to the ceiling from like so you're it's actually their the top of the hat? it's like a <laughs> they're like, right they're, they're like vampires they're like, I'll bring up a picture of that will you brother <laughs> yeah see if you can find uh pictures for the white elephant in fort worth stockyards so this, it's a commercial building, so the ceiling is 15 feet in the air. And when you walk in, you're just like taken aback because it's got this little stage. And every night of the week, they've got a local act in there playing, people cutting their teeth and trying to get discovered and yeah. whatever. And, you know, they've got their stool out with their little tip jar and their little CDs and a little sign they made to sell their CDs. Or maybe they've got some merch if they have played a little bit more, like that kind of thing where you start, right? Well, I need to go there. And you're in this little honky-tonk. I'm telling you, I used to, a couple of my rodeo buddies, we used to go down to Fort Worth every year. We road trip it. It's a 13-hour drive straight, and it's usually two guys that can get down there. You know, you switch one time when you're peeing. And uh, you go down there, and you'd stay in a hotel for a couple of nights, and then you drive straight back. And and you just hit, like, Cadillacs, or you'd go to, like, Billy Bob's, the big Billy Bob's that's in all the movies. That's in the Fort Worth Stockyards. Here we go. That's the white elephant. Whoa. Billy Bob's took over for Gillies as the biggest. Lindsay, yeah. we need to play here. So this is like the cool. Well, that's a very cool. Do you see that player. post right there? Yeah. All those posts have people's names and whatever. Sure. Like when you go in there, the bartender will just hand you a marker and you can write something on there. So when I was engaged to my now wife, I wrote, you know, I did the like super sappy Shane Emily Hart thing and then <laughs> sent her a picture of it. So now we're like memorialized on this post forever. Kyle, can you find that? Uh, 
Can you find that little <laughs> little Shane and uh, yeah, I don't, Emily I don't... Uh, Hart? I'll work on it. When we go down there, we should we should do a B and B down there. Um, I will point it out to you because it's like this is uh, where you can see the door. Whoop! Can we go back to that quick? You see on that far back where it says exit, that's the entrance actually. Oh. Okay. And so behind where this picture is being taken. Oh, you know what? No, it's that last post in front of us. But on the back side of it is where I wrote our names because the okay. stage is to your left here. It's got a dance floor that's pretty similar to the to the one that was at the Hog's Breath. Okay. And it's got a stage that's that's not big. It's, it kind of looks like Lee's. Yeah, a lot like Lee's yeah. Liquor Lounge actually. Um, and the stage is only like eight by ten or something. It's not real big. But that's where, I mean, any night of the week you go in there and you're seeing all these local live country acts and everybody in there is two-stepping and swinging. And, sure. You know, they do a, a, some waltz and stuff too, which is super cool. But do they do the hokey pokey? Yeah, they might. Turn yourself <laughs> around. So this oh, is... So they've got them up there organized and they've got the names of the people underneath them. Yes. So it's just not a hodgepodge of hats. Exactly. They actually have them organized with the with a, with a brand on it. Right. And some of them you're like, wow, you see some of the names and you're like that person. And, and they'll tell you, cause it, there's a story obviously. And they just say, when these people come and visit the bar, they know ahead of time that they're going to have to leave a hat. So they usually end up bringing an extra hat with them. Okay. And so was the bar George Strait just, kind enough to leave a hat. Uh, George Strait is there. He's got to be one of the first. So I don't want to like gross out whatever their local health department is, but take a look at that black hat. That was black. <laughs> Oh, no. That's dust on the top. And the, the, all the hats are like that. Like, they probably don't pay a lot of attention to it. But who cares? It's not the point. The point is, is if you're looking like all of our country fans. You drink fans, like this. Yeah. All of our <laughs> all of our country fans, you know, that, that know us or like listen to this podcast or whatever, um, the white elephant is, is definitely one of those places you got to go at least once in your life. I'm, I'm kind of bummed that I never made it there. Yeah. Never went to any of the honky tonks. It's a great steak place, almost like kitty corner from that. Um, called H threes, and it's uh, let's you know, go. It's a high. You guys can you ready? imagine? I mean, Fort Worth road trip is it. the original cow town in America. They have their own like it's like the Vatican. They have their own laws for the Fort Worth <laughs> stockyards. Sure. So when you walk into like a little retail store, we went in to do some shopping, mm-hmm. and this is like hats and clothes and like tchotchke and purses and earrings, like whatever, just a little retail store for like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And right when you first walk in the door, there's this little gal over here and she goes, can I get you something to drink? Like right when you first walk in and <laughs> my they got, kind of place. they got tall boys. They sell you a tall boy right there. And you walk in and say, no, I got my own. I'm like, no, and my you, boyfriend's here. <laughs> and you can walk out with your drink and go to another place or go to a bar. Like you can leave the bar with your drink because it's legal in the stockyards. I want to know how you equated that to the Vatican. Well, cause the Vatican has like their own law. Their own oh, like, government yeah. for I the got, Vatican. Yeah, they do. But they do you do get to ride way. a cow? No. Yes. <laughs> like the, f- this was my first Keep time. Talking. My first time going to the stockyards um, was my first time of all the like places I've been around the country. You know, growing up in the country and all that stuff, and being from the south, all that stuff. Um, the, my first time going into a, like a city area, like little city or whatever, and seeing horses roped up outside a bar. Oh, nice. They have like horse. And they got beer for the horses. <laughs> I don't know about that, but they should. <laughs> horses are bored standing around outside. Bring me a bump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's like people ride their horses in there, and then they ride them home, you know, probably half in the bag. And yeah, they got a couple places like that north of Phoenix. I can't think of the na- two names. There's two uh, towns up there. There's a loop from Scottsdale that goes up to, I know my wife would not remember the names of them. It's an old loop that people used to drive, and there's a couple big or carefree uh carefree uh, arizona and uh the town next to it but anyway, there's a couple of really big joints there where the people ride their horses there and there's a bunch of like um, um like night not nightclubs bars in the stockyards but the white elephant's the one that's very like no. authentic known sure. country like there's one up the street that's called cadillacs and that's a bit more clubby where they have djs and play some more modern stuff and Right. You know, I need to shift. I would like to shift gears a little bit because you said a few things that, you know, we were talking about women in country music. Yeah. And why there's not more and why there's so many more men. I think we're, we breezed over the obvious and you keep talking about it. You know, one of the reasons there's not as many female country artists, they're getting pregnant. And 
That's true. I mean, if that interferes with their career, and typically it does, yeah, uh, it's hard to raise children and be on a circuit. And I mean, that's kind of the obvious reason that there aren't more country music. Men don't have to worry about that. I mean, they don't. I mean, yeah. if they're it's father- the exact same thing in production, like TV production, film production. Yeah, if, if you're making it it means you normally don't have kids or a family yeah, yeah it's grueling yeah. i mean yeah. if you want to have children then you're probably not going to be on the want to want to be on the road with, with a bunch of guys and doing the tour thing which is just brutal right or so, you get used to that side of the life like ashley mineral i've heard a few of her interviewers right. where she's used to that side and then she comes home and she doesn't like know how to be home <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, if there's a gal that is really sincere about it, and I can't really throw any names out there right now, I mean, if they want to pursue their country career and they don't want to have children to interfere with that, then they get to a point in their life where they want to relax and maybe it's too late. And then maybe that's a huge heartache for them. Yeah. Um, There's so much involved with having children, being a country female entertainer, and it's just a tough balancing act. It sure is. So that's probably the... Yeah, you're... I mean, Joe, how do you do it? You're We're, a mom and a band owner and... I just made up my mind and I just chose this is who I want to be and what I want to do and I'm just going to do it and my family is very gracious and understanding and I feel for them, it's good for them to see me follow my dreams and work a job and take care of them yeah. um, so they know that they too can do whatever they put their mind to. Yeah. But it's work. What a great example and for your kids. And sacrifices. And so when they complain about, well, you're not here all the time, it's like, well, but you still have everything you've ever asked for. Yeah. And I'm just doing this so you don't know we're poor. Jill, how many children <laughs> do you have? I have four. Four, okay. Um, two are grown and out of the house already. And I want you to know she's only 22 years old. So yes. I don't know how you it's do amazing. That on that. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it was a miracle. <laughs> We've had quite a, you know, we talked about when TFD really just started kind of getting big on the scene. And to go from then, when you think about the female country presence to where we are now, it's amazing, There's right? There's so many females out there now. Look at I'm this. So, <laughs> well, I'm work so for excited boots. for them. What a great shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying. <laughs> yeah trying to work for sponsors actually at that point <laughs> oh nice boot what is that animal behind you oh or is that an animal nope that's just the stage behind well oh, that's i see your stages. arm and forgive me go oh, ahead. that's my hair go on <laughs> <laughs> that's not your <laughs> there's something in stepped a in that that's, one that's DK. my armpit hair there's a <laughs> i have razors that week she's got a she's got to braid if it. you're not watching this on a <laughs> video that is not true yeah, she looks a lot like... Uh, got a free plug for Christine Wish there. Yeah. Their, their, I guess it's not a watermark, but... Right, kind of, though, yeah. 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 Uh, I can't remember what I was just saying. We're just talking about like how different it is with all the like female country presence right now. Oh, now I feel like it's it's, like it's good. It's There's a lot, and I'm super proud of them. A lot of them I've talked to, um, like Sam Hetvet and um, Haley... You know, just Haley, she's like 13 or something. Uh, Reminds me of when Devin got on the scene. She was like right. 12. I know. And she put in so much work and I'm she so is. glad she's, she's one of my fave out there, but yeah, she's great. Uh, yeah. So I've talked to a few women. and I'm just like, I'm so glad you're not wasting time. Cause I feel like I wasted so much time and, but then I guess I didn't know what I knew then. So now I'm just, in, you know, implying everything that I know now. So it's helping, but I want to help them too. So if anybody has any questions, come to me. I'll give you all information advice <laughs> it's cool to see the stories of how your careers develop um you know i think a lot about like aaron grand mm-hmm. you know when aaron first broke on the scene she had kind of a duet thing her and yeah. another gal and she decided she, i think she wanted to probably pursue it a little bit more um uh, aggressively aggressively thank you feverishly aggressively uh, professionally than mm-hmm. the other gal. So then Aaron kind of went on her own and, and now look at her. Yeah. You know, she's part of this group with Nashville and I know I'm so proud. She's of her. in Nashville. Like every other day, it seems like I'm seeing her mom. I think she Melissa lives there now. On. Oh, she does. Yeah. She moved there. Okay. Um, a very we, talented young lady. I actually got to write a song with her at one of the Midwest country cool. organizations. So yeah, she's that was sweetheart. pretty fun. Yeah. That was really easy. I think we were one of the first to be finished with our song. We just fed off each other and we finished it. We we're done. It was good. We we should record that one actually. You should. Yeah. 
we uh the last time i um uh, not last time i saw her but there was one time i saw her she was playing the state fair with ben johnson mm-hmm. and there was this guy because you know ben johnson has this real bad not bad but bad rap that he sounds like your church sure because he does have a voice that sounds like your church yeah um and there's some guy in the crowd that kept yelling take me to church take me to church and you know they were just kind of doing their set yeah. And then they were like wrapping up their set or whatever. And Aaron's looking at him going, you better do an air church song. Cause he's not going to stop. And it was pretty funny. So yeah. Did he? He did. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember what it was. I but... think I worked with him once. He's a really straight up stand up guy. Yeah. He's very, and he was super gracious to the, they just, they had a set worked out and, and so he, he didn't want to deviate from it, but then basically he mm-hmm. got the permission slip from Aaron. So yeah. She was like, well, I'll just wait. <laughs> yeah we uh at some point i've got ben on the list up there to to get him in you know i know ben pretty well too so okay we'll get get him in studio hopefully at some point down the road and i love this uh i get to sit home i watched binge watched yesterday um and i just learning like, things about people out on boots and backstraps now no <laughs> no because i like learning things so even hearing you guys talk about your hunting stuff yeah you know I've never been hunting, so it's kind of interesting to me. Did it sound like we knew what we were talking about? Yeah. You okay. guys, got him fooled, TK. <laughs> you guys are doing great. No, this is a great show. I'm glad. I hope it prospers. And Thank you. you guys well, do well with it. Having hey, you here can is I, help. Uh, can I throw something in? It's totally random. It's completely a Danny thing. Okay. Um, so for all three of you, if you were a pro wrestler, what music, what song would be playing as you walked out? Your entrance song? Yeah. Mine would be... Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. That would be mine. Okay. What would be yours? I I don't know. Wow. We are the champions. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, it's got to be a Toby Keith song about I ain't as good as I once was. <laughs> right? <laughs> I was just thinking beer for my horses. <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, know. I guess I'd have to think about that. Mine would be Staying Alive. Staying Alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Well, in that shot that we were showing, it's that raining. Some people men. couldn't see. You looked a lot like Gretchen Wilson. You had the oh, pilot glasses. glasses on, and yeah, and my animal. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That was something Shane saw. I don't know. I didn't see any of that. <laughs> yeah, that was Shane. Someone was talking about Harry. Arnfield. I'll dive on the sword. I'll dive on the sword. <laughs> Thanks for taking one for the team. Yeah, I got to. Well, as much fun as we're having here, yeah. Joe, we do got to bring this thing in for a landing. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I mean, aside from our friendship, I am honored to have you in here as a professional and and I'm a huge fan of what you do and I wish you nothing but the best going forward and we're looking forward to seeing you. And after listening to just one of your songs, I'm already a fan Yeah, and I can't wait to, uh, uh, my wife, it's a Saturday here in Minnesota and my wife and I are going to maybe go to a movie and we're going to maybe vegetate on the couch a little bit. Go Uh, to a movie? Is that still a thing? Oh man. You know, we live in North Branch. That's true. (laughs) And we have a great movie theater here. And, you know, in the wintertime, unless you snowmobile or ski, which I don't do either of, or ice fish, and I'm not opposed to ice fishing. I'd like to get out there once in a while, but I just don't. We go to a lot of movies. Sit down, have some great buttered popcorn and and watch a movie. And I'll probably see you there. Yeah. And you live right by there. Yeah, I love cinematic adventures. They're my favorite. I'm not an outdoorsy person, so. Anyway, I was. this is kind of a roundabout trip of saying that maybe we'll pull up some of your music and listen to it. Thank you. You know, I mean, I was so impressed with that song, and I encourage you to. You'll love the other stuff, too. I Thank encourage you. you to write that song that's so dear to your heart okay. or close to your heart. And uh, this summer, Shane and I are doing road trips, and. You're on the list. We're going to go and visit you. We are. Well, thank you. Yeah, we can count you. on it. I will. We'll do some marketing for it and get some folks to come yeah. out. Not that you need our help, but <laughs> we'll get on stage and come up and introduce you. Yeah, it was great we'll, to meet you. We'll get the crowd going, and then we'll introduce you and make them drink. And then Shane, yeah. Shane and I can be backup singers and see how many people go for the doors. <laughs> Fire, fired after the first song. Then we'll Is finally that how that have goes? a video of Shane. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, <laughs> thanks, thank folks, okay. for joining us for another episode uh, of Boots and Backstraps. Um, don't forget to check us out on uh, Facebook and, of course, iTunes and Spotify and um, YouTube, all the, the best places to see us. And while you're there, because I want to make sure we're getting this integrated, uh, make sure that you give us a like and share. Um, make sure you subscribe to these uh, channels that we have, these avenues that we have to see our content. 
Um, and of course, uh, leave us comments as well. We're always curious to hear what people think about these shows. Absolutely. And, you know, maybe they've got questions for us or questions for our guests, and we can pass those along to them as well. So if you have those questions, you can send those to Boots and Backstraps podcast at gmail.com. And uh, we hope to see some of those questions in there in the near future. TK. Yeah. Come on now. Come on now. Bring this plane in for a landing. Everybody, whether you're belting out your favorite country song or pursuing your favorite game animal, I encourage you to use that same passion to pursue the Lord. He'll teach you to shoot straight. We'll see you next week. Come on now. Burn to the ground.